Uh, 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 testing testicles. Test testosterone. Testerosta. Test testosterone. Cool. So my mic is buzzing a little bit, but I can't be fucked. So, all right, let's get into it. Um, this is going to be a stream about the manosphere. That is the cucks who don't want to like advertise that they're cucks, um, and these people and their insecurities that they project onto women, uh, like LGBT people, other minorities, and the like. And also, in general, going to be discussing that and its, like, attachment to statism, the fact that these people oftentimes will also pretend to be libertarians or other things, um, and in a variety of ways, um, these people have been a scourge on various spaces, not the least of which is the fact that a significant amount of fake libertarians decided to follow these people and support them. Um... So let's have an actual conversation about how to solve these issues um, and also start with a conversation uh, about what these issues are and introductions. So uh, to get started, everybody introduce yourself. How about we start with the newest person, Dead Boy, and we'll circle on from there. People can just start saying words. All right, yeah, I'm Dead Boy. I'll be, uh, what I'm planning to do in the future is start, like, mainly providing content on, like, some of the things I'm more interested in talking about, like, um, you know, urban planning as well as, you know, like, economic policy as well. But this conversation was a little too interesting for me to pass up, so I thought I would, uh, <laughs> jump on this one. All right. I guess we'll do Hody next. Hey guys, I'm Hody Johns. I'm uh, just happy to be a friend of Jeremiah's, Jeremy's, and uh, mutual. Yeah, yeah, we are actually. Yeah, I'm not just like the creepy guy where it's like he's my friend. I hope he notices me someday. Yeah, no, uh... no. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, uh, you know, I, I predominantly do studies in faith. Um, that is what I got my degree in. Um, I've been in liberty spaces for a while because there's a lot of overlap between freedom and God. And so uh, happy Easter and happy Trans Day of Visibility for all of you. And to those who celebrate both, I hope you're having an excellent double double day. Yeah. I'm Rose. So anyone who has been following this channel has probably seen me by now. I'm, uh, let's see, been a small libertarian pretty much my entire life. I've been involved in the Libertarian Party for a couple years, and uh, I'm fairly active in various social media circles. That's about it. My name is Anarcho Appalachian, and I live in the mountains and am a monster. I uh, am well read in uh, many anarchist. Uh, philosophies and writers and i uh hate the government above all else i also don't like the manosphere very much <laughs> yeah <laughs> well and there's a uh, well I, I was about to say surprising crossover but it's not fucking surprising because like one of the chief issues with the manosphere as far as i can see is that the manosphere so oftentimes is comprised of the kind of person who wants to blame other people for their problems and then point the finger and say, as long as we deal with them, um, the problems will go away. And the state often relies on scapegoating. So um, let's get started by actually, like, you know, establishing what we understand the manosphere to be, um, some of the reasons that we're here today, like Manosphere Anonymous, but like not, because obviously we're showing our faces. Half, uh, two thirds, two, uh, three fifths of us anyway. I can do numbers, I promise. Um, last time I tried to show my face, it corrupted the camera and caught on fire. Sorry. Uh. No, I don't believe you because I've seen it before. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that was my last camera. Uh. Oh, okay. So that's why we only have that one video. Okay. Makes uh. sense now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, let's start with Dead Boy, since he was, like, extremely interested in this subject specifically. So, when it comes to the Manosphere, do you want me to talk about, like, basically what led to the current incarnation, or just to talk about it in its current form? Uh, anything you want to, like, bring up. This is, like, these, these discussions, I want to be sort of free-form moving, the kind of things. 
Yeah, to my understanding, because, like, the thing is, I found myself getting somewhat interested in at least what would become the Manosphere, whatever it was, the men's rights movement, when I first read it, um, Cassie J's documentary, The Red Pill, which kind of where she basically went down the rabbit hole of investigating their talking points and stuff like that when she you know like she had made two documentaries before that which was daddy i do and the right to love which was on like you know marriage equality and stuff like that and then she did this documentary expecting to hate men right men's rights activists because people mm. in her feminist told them that they were all you know bad bad evil whatever so she went and started like talking with some of the main figureheads some of them were members of the honey badger some of them were got the people from a voice for men like paul elam and dean esme and those people and as she started going through the data points, you know, like finding out about like some of the struggles with, you know, video game addiction and these other like men's issues related afflictions, as well as like unfairness, domestic abuse and social services for that stuff. She then started to kind of like the wheels, basically the documentary shows us in real time, the wheels turning in her head, as well as when she talks to feminists and their societal blind spots towards it that made her no longer want to be a feminist. That's what made me want to start looking into it. So I started like watching some of the content of the Honey Badgers, like, um, you know, that's like Karen Strong, Hannah yep. Wall, and Prem Reaper, those people. And I started looking into the stuff that they brought up and I was like, okay, yeah, there is definitely some unfairness towards men when it comes to this stuff. And I thought, okay, this is a val these are valid causes to bring to people's attention, even if some of the people who call themselves MRA, there were some things about, there were certain things they did I wouldn't always like. But I was like, okay, these are good points. It needs to get brought up and highlighted more. Then, of course, you know, like, of course, Jordan Peterson gets popular, which wasn't a bad thing because, it, you know, he's Jordan Peterson. But when I want to say the bridge between men's rights and the pickup artist space that always existed, as well as like the male self improvement gurus. The person who I'd argue was the bridge that started this, whether he meant to or not, was probably Kevin Samuels, who, like, you know, originally, whenever guys would come to him, he would basically, he'd let them know, like, basically, they don't make enough money, they're not that attractive, whatever, and then tell them to, like, improve the things they can improve. And then when he started talking to women as well, he started getting controversy because sometimes he was just as harsh, if not more. And when he died... You know, like around the time Fresh and Fed and like those guys started rising to prominence largely by latching, leeching off of his popularity. But then when he died, that ended up leaving a vacuum that led to not only Fresh and Fit becoming more prominent, but Andrew Tate becoming the more prominent voices in that space. And then they started latching on to like trying to become mainstream, trying to latch on the mainstream right wingers to get more relevant, which is what's led to their talking points being quote unquote the most important thing which is them complaining about body counts them talking about you know these only fans hoes quote unquote talking about like you know some of the things like the unfairness and divorce court and stuff like that they bring that up barely but most of the time it's basically a whole don't trust these hoes type of ethos to a lot of the things that they say yeah, yeah you know and and just to like as to piggyback off of that slightly and say something like, I don't know, 90 seconds. Uh, the, the Gamergate thing was similar. Um, and there was some overlap in those circles. I used to support Gamergate um, because it was, like, about ethics and games journalism. And then it became yeah. all about, like, attacking SJWs, the wokes, and that sort of thing. Yeah. And now I regret some of the people I supported because they are overtly supporting Hitler and things like that like escape velocity on twitter um yeah like I, I i used to support that account back in the gamergate days and now i'm like oh they're supporting nazis now um and uh -uh. it's it's that in so many like cases like there's certain people in there who latched on because they wanted to blame minorities and justify statism and it's it's like that with this like and uh fucking i'm still like mutuals with a significant amount of people in those spaces and not all of them are like this i'm not remotely trying to say that but enough yeah. of them are that it's like hey this is a fucking problem um yeah 
it's just enough of it to make it easy to discredit the cause. Yeah. Like, I, I, I came here for ethics and games journalism. Why are we against trans people now? Um, you know, fucking... So, all right. I guess then I'll, I'll kick it to, uh, to, to Hody to discuss some of his experiences with these people, because I know, I know he's seen some of this trend, especially given the fact that he's in religious circles, and he's seen them unfortunately get corrupted by these same kinds of mentalities and people. Yeah, um, my my relation to the Manosphere is I was a I I was part of it. I was part of the problem, not just as a victim, but as somebody who um, spoke about it a lot. I was probably somebody you should have blocked like ten to fifteen years ago. Um, maybe it's a little older than that now, but um, just a real real problematic person, and all of that occurred. Um, because I really felt a lot of, I felt a lot of problems that a lot of men go through. And unfortunately you have your choices between pretty much two hegemonic bodies. One who says, oh, I understand your problem. Let me offer you some, admittedly in hindsight, very bad solutions. And the other one which says, no, they, they, oh, you're an idiot. You're a problem. You just hate women. You're just having, and so then all of a sudden, well, between the two, I'd rather have the somebody who cares about me than somebody who doesn't. Now that's not very logical because ultimately neither of them actually cared about me, but at least the one pretended to. And so I was a young man. I was having poor dating experiences in college. Um, I got married. Um, my wife um, had uh, left me. And I, I don't want to make this because one of the things that I've learned is, of course, to recognize, like, you know, uh, my role in some of these things. But when somebody cheats on you once out of it and you were you put forth your best effort and they put forth a zero percent effort that just kind of doubles down and then sets you in this mentality. It's like maybe women are like this. <laughs> and when you read even some books that are try to be helpful about it, like men are from Mars, women from Venus or even psychological books. So they're just like, well, let me tell you some patterns about women you might not know versus patterns about men. And I was like, I really like these men men's patterns and I really don't like these women's patterns. I don't have an appreciation for what they bring to the table and all these. And, and so I, I suddenly became this pseudo intellectual because I was reading intellectual books, mm -hmm. but I was, I was stereotyping everybody with the pattern as opposed to, you know, <laughs> making them part of like, well, not everybody falls in their pattern, right? We're a bunch of libertarians and anarchists in this chat, obviously, some people don't fall into the pattern of what most human beings tend to do, you know? And so I was holding people to this terrible standard. I had to, I was dating. I mean, when you're dating in college and everybody's trying to experience life, of course, finding your forever person is very difficult. You learn a lot about yourself. You learn a lot about self accountability. And I was lucky to have a lot of friends and family that were willing to understand my problems because dismissing the problem doesn't make it go away. It's just going to fester in your soul and you're going to find somebody who's willing to deal deal with that. Mm -hmm. But then also go like, hey, I know you had a problem with, I mean, you've dated a bunch of people, you're married to somebody, and I know you had problems with all of them. Let's maybe look at something that isn't a stereotypical reason why this happened. And, and when I finally, they, they were willing to both address the issues I had as well as provide me a different prescription, it was, it was very eye-opening. Um, as to the path I had gone down. One of the problems that we deal with in psychology is a lot of times the best solution is long term. It takes a long time. When you're in the manosphere, um, especially when I was younger, what's funny is the modern manosphere, like within the last like couple years, has actually resulted in men not having sex, like incels. Like um, back when I was in it, it was like how to get laid in like two seconds. Here's two pickup lines Fucking where you get laid. PUAs. Right, yeah. So. So like, you know, when you get somebody, when you go as a lonely person and somebody in the manosphere is like, hey, here's some negging, here's some tips, you'll get laid tomorrow. And like you end up having, and I don't <laughs> yeah. want to say laid because, you know, yeah. I was a virgin and everything. Oh, like, that's what they say, you know? Yeah. You, when you get that companionship it and it works immediately, that's a solution to your problem that you get right away. And this is compared to the other side, which is there's a solution to your problem, but it's going to require you reading a lot of books, developing yourself as a person. And this is one of the things, well, it falls into a right-wing reactionary 
rabbit hole as opposed to a, a left wing. And I have a problem with authoritarian branches on both. But the reactionaries is almost always your gut instinct. So it's almost always on the right wing. And that's where I fell to. I became a strategist for the GOP. And it finally, like I said, people opened my eyes. I saw the path I was going down. I met women that were fantastic. Um, I met men who d I did not, if you don't like stereotyping women and all those stereotypes, like if you like doing that, just imagine if men were treated like their stereotypes, like we're all abusive, we're all drunks, we're all non-committal, like we're all stupid, right? Like, Homer is Simpson. that how you want to be judged? Right. We're all Homer Simpsons. We're all Peter Griffins. We're, yes. all, we're all the yeah. American hats. You know, I mean, I have so, seen that too. Like you, you do see certain groups, or yeah, certain communities acting as if yeah, all men are just awful. All of them are stupid, and you know, can't cook dinner without setting the kitchen on fire. Um, right, and yeah. there's a there's an element to that, and I think that if I were to give like the the other side of this some some recommendations, one of the most important things you can do is stop trying to defend the people, the feminists, or whoever who go too far. When yeah. an Andrea Dworkin puts a gigantic hairball in your salad, you need to put that hairball out of your salad. And I understand you can thank her for her contributions, the things that she's done right, but when she does like a let's raise men in tanks and harvest their sperm kind of thing, you go, okay, nope, <laughs> none of that. Yeah. You're immediately out, you know, and, and that would would have made me a lot more secure because when because one of the things that you do with a lot of these Manosphere recruiters, they'll be like, have you ever noticed that they don't recognize these, these and these bad things? They only recognize these and these and these bad things. And you go, oh, my gosh, that's so true. And this is how cults start. Right. So mm -hmm. I've talked a lot. I just wanted to get that ground groundwork there. Um, it was a long process, and I'm eager to talk about that much later. But that's kind of how I got involved, and a little bit about how I got out of it. And and, and real quick before, because I, I want to get to Rose and and so, some of like her interactions with this sort of person. Obviously, yeah. before I do though, like maybe sixty seconds. Um, the the general thing that I want people to recognize from your story is. If you sound official and seem smart and seem clean and don't seem too offensive and you're trying to sound like you understand what you're talking about and maybe you have a degree and you sound like this, um, you know, you can convince people that you're you're speaking from an intellectual standpoint and especially like, oh, I'm the intellectual dark web. No, you're probably not. You're just probably saying things that many mainstream people would agree with. Um, because it's more convenient and easier than admitting that maybe you've got some problems too and you've got to clean your own mental room and figure out your own shit. Like Jordan Peterson, for instance, is who I'm mocking right now and he, uh, he, uh, he's, he's actually kind of a bad guy in, in a lot of ways and one of the things that I would say is um, somebody who projects this, uh, this like, oh, I'm so against the current culture or the whatever, uh, all this thing and says that you're mentally ill and shit. Um, somebody who says that maybe, maybe if you want to be the progenitor of mental health advice, don't be a fucking addict at the same time. Don't be treating people in your own life like shit who don't agree with you. And be like the kind of person who would be well adjusted if you're going to give people psychological advice. But like a, a significant amount of the psychological community is comprised of people who've got fucked up minds to begin with. And they're like, well, hey, I want to find out why my mind's fucked up. Uh -huh. So I'll get into this field so that I can unfuck other people's minds. And oftentimes that doesn't end up working out too well. They just end up <laughs> fucking up everybody. Rule, honestly. Yeah. I just assume anyone who goes into psychology or if they're more intelligent, neuroscience, that is probably fucked up in some way and trying to figure out why they're fucked up. Yeah. I mean, Segment 4 is probably an example of that, and he's kind of like the father <laughs> in this whole thing. Yeah. Yep. So, Rose, you, you've probably <laughs> encountered some of these um, mental sausage fests in your career online. Uh, do you have a thing to say about them? Well, okay, I'll start with this. So, one thing I have noticed uh, is that I mean, I think young people in general are suffering from, you know, a lack of purpose and lack of opportunity that has most that's mostly to do with the system that, you know, we're living under, you know, it's yeah, you're by the time you're in your 20s, you're usually under a mountain of debt, you know, you can't, you know, get a fulfilling career oftentimes till your mid 20s, to even 30s, you can't start a family. Um, however, 
like I, you know, growing up, okay, well, first off, like my mom grew up in a very strict Catholic household where gender roles were strictly enforced. So by the time she had her own kids, she was determined not to raise them the way she had been raised. So I grew up, you know, hearing, oh, you know, girls can do anything they want to, you know, you can be a scientist, you can be, you know, a doctor, you can be an engineer. One thing I have noticed, though, like, you know, as you know, there was all this encouragement for, you know, girls to get into, you know, you know, you don't have to start a family, you can have a career, you can, you know, be independent. I noticed that, you know, boys were not getting the same treatment. They were, you know, often told, oh, you've had, you know, it's so great for so many, uh, like for so long, you know, man up, don't complain. So I do think that there are a lot of young men in today's society who are suffering from, you know, a lack of purpose and, you know, feeling like they've been stripped of opportunities that previous generations had. So I think it's led to a lot of resentment, which is what set the stage for the, you know, manosphere as we're seeing it today. Mm -hmm. But as for my own experiences, yeah. Um, I will say, thankfully, like the uh, incel types, they, there are a ton of them lurking in libertarian communities. Uh, thankfully, this is mostly an online phenomenon from at least in my own experience, because I mean, I'm involved in, you know, multiple libertarian circles in real life. Uh, probably at least two thirds of my, you know, friends and acquaintances are male. None of them are like this. So this is mostly, you know, Internet communities. But yeah, they I mean, I'm like I'm constantly getting them like on my friends list. I don't know why they think it's a good idea to send me a friend request. But then, like, you know, I'll ex I vet them very carefully, but they still slip through the cracks. And then, you know, all of a sudden I'm seeing all these posts bitching about, you know, modern women. And, uh, you know, there's, uh, yeah, men are so horribly discriminated against in today's society. You know, don't get married. Don't trust women. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it gets tiring. And it's also, okay, so I give people plenty of reasons for hating me. So it's always particularly jarring when someone hates me solely because of my gender. And I have had this happen. Like, they'll just get irrationally angry if I say something to them. Like, no matter how innocent or, like, uh, you know, non-confrontational it is. I'm like, okay, so of all the things that, you know, you could be pissed about, like, seriously, like, this is what you're mad about? Like, it's mm -hmm. weird. Like. I mean, I've always judged people as individuals, so, like, stereotyping on, you know, something as minor as gender has always been kind of a foreign concept to me. Yeah. It's pretty ridiculous. And, uh, what about... I've had, like, I mean, I've had my share of failed relationships, and, like, at no point has it ever even occurred to me to be angry at, like, approximately half the population just because they're the same gender as the person who I had a bad experience with. So, I guess it's a mentality I can't really wrap my head around. Yeah. yeah. And then one of the problems, yeah, just like um, like you had mentioned how the government often scapegoats group of people, unfortunately for both sides of the equation, at least when it comes to the people who make money and have power in those particular sides of the equation, you know, like part of like the so-called female advocacy industrial complex or whatever you want to call it, and the men's rights spaces, that there's a lot of money to gain by playing on people's tribalistic impulses. Mm -hmm. Whether it's the second you hear a story about some terrible thing a man did and then all of a sudden you're like CCC men are the same, they're bad, they're bad, they're bad, vote for us or whatever and then we'll protect you from evil misogynists. Or if it's, you know, these K-toids who are like, you know, CCC, they don't trust these hoes, pay for my courses and I swear I'll make you a ladies man or whatever the fuck they say. Like, and all it does is just exacerbate the issue. <laughs> like... If y'all don't like the, the, I guess we call it a gender war, why are we contributing to it? Like, at some point, someone has to stop fighting, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of the same with, like, the actual wars that our government doesn't like to stop doing. At some point, someone has to stop fighting for it to end. But social media algorithms seem to really love the gender war shit. I mean, maybe, maybe it's because, you know, I've stupidly interacted with it when it's come across my feed, but, like... The algorithms seem to push it very hard. You know, I'll constantly see posts bashing, you know, one gender or the other. Yeah. yeah it, it, Earth, Earth I mean, I'm not going not to not to get conspiratorial or anything, but I mean, <laughs> yeah, if there were a certain group of, you know, 
privileged elites who thought the world was overpopulated. I suppose this would be a beneficial thing to push, make, you know, men and women hate each other so that mm -hmm. they're less likely to get together and make more people. Yeah, two things on that. First off, like three things, actually. Earth Nerd in chat says, rest assured I can earn your hatred without being a woman. A house divided is a people <laughs> conquered. Um, yeah, and like that, that's, that was what I was saying the other day, like, a, a key issue here, like abortion, um, you know, spousal rights, uh, fucking so many things that I could mention are a direct result of the commodification of the sexual relationship, and attention is currency in the marketplace of ideals, and when you have that, like, mentality uh, of, I'm going to try to commodify relationships, I'm going to try to commodify men and women, you're incentivized to keep them plunging ever further down this rabbit hole, and you're in incentivized to keep them railroaded into bullshit. Um, and that keeps their minds suspended, it keeps them divided against each other. It's the reason, like, and, and that's the thing, that's, that's the reason I push so hard against uh, all of this shit, not just the the, the rad femmes who are admittedly annoying, I spent years um, pushing against them. And I still don't support a lot of what they say, but um, the obverse is also cancer. Um, and, like, the, yeah. the idea that it's okay when men do it, um, that we've just had the oppression uh, dynamic subverted, and we should return to how it was, and this enables fascism, it enables the trad mentality to encourage us to return with a V instead of a U because they think that ma making part of it Latin is based. It's not, you're just cringe and stupid and fuck you. Um, but, yeah. like, the whole thing, um, like, to me, this is the signal. This is the signal. It's a virtue signal from the right. And it's saying yes. that, like, you know, because we aren't like those people, those democrats those liberals that are kneeling at our feet and suckling our cock we're fucking awesome you know like we're owning the libs and by that i mean we got into an argument with 16 year olds at a high school or 19 year olds at a college i'm ben shapiro and i'm here to talk fast <laughs> i had a feeling that that's what we were going to talk about yeah fucking steven crowder i don't beat my wife in private stop asking questions <laughs> fucking like all these people wait wait wait, wait. does he no, I would never say something unsubstantiated like that. He absolutely doesn't. But he's Surely definitely hypothetically if he did. Yeah, he's definitely <laughs> at least rude to her when there are cameras at least around. Um and abusive when she's trying to do, go out and do things like stupid things like get the groceries. I'm sure that's somehow women's fault. Um the liberals or whatever. And that's also why he had to get not gay Jared to sign an NDA that he eventually used to suppress the truth about how he was treated on his show and why he's now actively suing Jared to keep his silence so that Jared doesn't talk about what an abusive piece of shit Steven Crowder is. I'm so sure that he's not abusive to anyone else in his life. Um, <laughs> but anyway, and you know, like I'm so sure that that's why Candace Owens got fired at, uh, at Daily Wire because the people at Daily Wire are so like, open and honest about gender and sexuality that uh, they would not have taken out their bullshit on employees either the same way that they were taking out their bullshit on um you know fucking lgbt people women uh people of color a lot of shit like that like maybe 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 it's all connected and the sjw's weren't entirely wrong and we shouldn't dismiss wokeness entirely maybe we should be a little woke but yeah like <sighs> To, just to, like, get uh, William involved in this part of the conversation. Or it's not, ah, fucked up. Uh, anarcho appellation. You're all right, man. All right. Just say, hey, uh, you can either say Will or you can uh, say AA. That's, I, I know that my name's long. I'll just, uh, I'll just say yeah. Sasquatch. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeti, uh, Bigfoot, whatever you want to call yeah, me. There we go. Uh, so I'll, I'll pontificate about the manosphere a little bit. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. Sorry, uh, part of my porch just broke. Jesus. Oh. All right, uh, so, <laughs> yeah. You got those big uh, feet. So, 
Yeah, man, it's there. They are huge. Uh, so the Manosphere. I have, I feel like, a uh, somewhat unique uh, perspective on the Manosphere because I sort of see it as a, uh, well, obviously it's a grift, but I see it as a unique sort of grift trying to co-op something that I was raised around and make money off of it. So they use the word man and they talk about masculinity and they try to appeal to masculine tendencies, ideas, and a lot of right-wing conservatism goes along with that. But I think one thing that they're missing and what they're trying to basically mock and bailey you about is the difference between the socially obsessed man and the, uh, what I would call the stoic man, the, the stoic ideal, right? So yeah. I grew up in the South in deep poverty and uh, my, like, for instance, my grandfather, not my great grandfather, but my grandfather lived through the Great Depression and had no idea it happened until he read about it being over in the newspaper, because that's the kind of poor farmer he was. Uh, my family raised me and my brothers with a strong sense of what I would call stoic masculinity, which is don't be, you know, don't be emotionally closed to your family, but don't let your emotions rule your actions. Always put your principles and your ideals and your family and the things you live for first over your, you know, physical needs and stuff like that. And I feel like the Manosphere tries to take that respectability, that idealized version of the Stoic man and co-opt it for their socially conscious, like, I guess clout chasing man right like they want to seem masculine in the stoic sense but in reality they are anything but stoic they're constantly yeah. clamoring for any and all attention and every bit of quote unquote coolness that they can harness but they sell you on the idea of true masculinity only to actually be selling snake oil masculinity you see what i mean yeah yeah 100 and, and, and like you know uh -huh. That, that that's that's the way to put it because like it's one of those things hashtag you don't have to tell me you're alpha if you're alpha um you exactly. know it's one of those mentality focused things that people should be a lot better about you know like if if you know your position everyone else knows too because your position is that like you've expressed it you've projected it you've become it you are embodying it you don't need to like convince people that you're masculine uh if you yeah. do it's because you're not doing enough masculine shit um exactly and if you're not doing mm -hmm. enough masculine shit then maybe you should remember how to man and stop blaming women yep. exactly right it's like it's like people who have to tell you that they're so smart or tell you that they're attractive or something it's like um yeah you wouldn't have to say that because if it were true because people around you would just notice Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, you wouldn't have to say you have a high These too. guys are so far from stoic, too. Like, it just, it only takes a tiny amount of prodding to get oh, them to go completely, you know, uh, Like with Myron's Frank Castling, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. Yeah, elaborate. If you guys let me. Uh, after after, after uh, Bigfoot. Yeah, uh, if, uh, if you guys will let me uh, theorycraft for a second, I think that one of the reasons why. Uh, manosphere stuff has become so successful as of late as opposed to maybe a few years ago on the internet or even earlier is probably down to the sort of i guess lack of positive masculinity in modern culture these days uh there really is like i got it from my family but i did not get it from the television male was stupid and sex obsessed and that's all that any man was and it was it was like such a i guess demoralizing thing because like i had positive male role models in my life but none of them were in the media they were all in my actual life and as i get older those men die and so there's less and less for me to show my children except for i guess myself i feel like that's a sort of systemic problem that is leading to men looking for literally any source of quote unquote masculinity, even if it's mm -hmm. obviously not. Yeah. You know what right. I mean? So they're drawn to people like, you know, Andrew Tate or yeah, other mm -hmm. manosphere grifters who it's really say that they know to how to be an oil. alpha male. And I can teach you how to be an alpha male if you subscribe to my course or some bullshit. I'll take my yeah. Something my grandfather used to say was it's really easy to sell snake oil in the land of no snakes. Yeah. <laughs> So um, let's let's get 
to um to Dead Boy real quick. Elaborate on the Myron Frank Castle thing. <sighs> anytime yeah. there's been a clip with this moron, anytime a girl like or usually it's a girl questions something he says or goes against one of his talking points. He would always get really irate, start shouting at the girl or whatever with one of his quote unquote data points. And when it didn't work, he'd get frustrated and be like, he'd kick them out of the, you know, kick them off of the show and call it being, call himself Frank Castle or whatever. And then like they even pander off of it by like putting like YouTube clips or quote unquote Frank Castle compilations because he's just so base. He just throws these hoes out of here and doesn't put up with it or whatever the hell they say. Yeah, well, and, and the fun thing about that is anybody who's actually read The Punisher at all knows that yeah. every conservative, basically, interpretation of Frank Castle is garbage. Absolute yeah. dog shit. Like, Frank Castle is a great person. He's just also yeah. mentally damaged. He doesn't like it when people try to do what he does because not even he likes what he does. The point of it isn't that the Punisher is a fucking awesome person and that you should try to imitate him now. The he said like he, there was this this uh, sort of I think to me great example of the character where he sees yeah. a cop car with the sticker on it and he tears <laughs> it up and the cops are very upset and there's like we have your back you you don't want to lose that protection and he's like. Um, nobody should do what I do. If you want a role model, go like go to Captain America. He'd be glad to have you. Like yeah. he's he doesn't think even he should do what he does. He's constantly conflicted, and he constantly has to tell his brain to shut the fuck up so that he can keep doing it. If you try to imitate that, if you try to zest your way into that mentally ill fucking vigilante lifestyle, you better be yeah. prepared to potentially be the villain. But these people exclude all possibility that they're the villain because they have to sell the notion that everything they say is based in real and red-pilled and true and they're Neo and the Matrix and blah blah. Jack off into the microphone, you stupid piece of shit. Um, so, like, that's my mentality with these people. I think I think that they that they hijack aesthetics, they hijack imagery, they hijack mentality, they hijack psych psychology. They try to worm their way into your anima so that they can pull you into their grift. Um, and I see, because of what I'm saying, that I'm starting to hit the spiritual notes, which is what I think Hody is going to want to jump in on. Yeah, I think probably one of the, the biggest losses in this in this whole bit is the, the selling out of... I mean, let's call it a sellout, because that's absolutely what it is. The selling out of spirituality... Um, of faith in order to latch on to this. And you see this happening when they welcome. It's not even about, I mean, they'll say it's about Christian values and then welcome openly, you know, atheist, Muslim, whatever else people, which, first of all, I want to say you should be welcoming of these people. But they say, oh, no, I'm pushing for like a theocracy, but here's an atheist that also hates women this atheist is pretty based right like pretty cool and you're just like oh my gosh like the one time i actually needed you to be christ-like and you like immediately sell it out and they get you on this spiritual level i mean genesis 1 it is not good for man to be alone right this yep. is something god creates all of creation says it's good then creates a man solo and says not good you need uh -huh. somebody. You need another person. It's the only thing that God made where he was like, that's not right. I, something needs to get fixed with this. So one of the issues that we have is that we have these lonely men who yep. are pushing for more loneliness because of their behavior, right? Because they, they latch onto this ideology that in turn makes them more and more and more lonely. I was lucky to get out of it. Like I said, there's been a change in this. I've been lucky to get out of it when I did. Because back when I was doing it, it was very much like a here's how to get laid. And women actually like would probably even be, well, not even probably, most of them probably are attracted to the kind of person that I was. And I still had a lot of obvious 
problems, but at least I brought something to the table, um, something that was desirable. Nowadays, you look at the charts and the increasing growth and men who are not able, and they usually measure it by sex, which I think is unfortunate, but let's just talk about the sheer loneliness of it and the increasing of the divide between men and women, their political views, nowhere close together. I mean, this is something historically women have always been a little more liberal than men by like five, ten percent. We're now looking at a generation where three and you know, it's three to one men being conservative and three to one women being um, you know, left wing progressives. And how are they supposed to build with that? And you just see all this spiritual disconnect for me and it manifests politically because I, I don't take the government as the source of our problems or our solutions. They're they are the barometer of what's going on with our culture. And because there is a spiritual illness that unfortunately people embrace, they will tell you that it's spiritual wellness. They will tell you, no, this is what Christ would do. Christ said women back in the kitchen. Christ said women this. <gasps> Completely forgetting, by the way, it's Easter, right? Oh, who proclaimed that Christ is risen, right? <laughs> like something that apparently women aren't supposed to do, according to most Christians these days. And it's a really unfortunate faith. This was very intentional. I'm going to recommend a book called The Other Evangelicals. Some of you here may have read it. And it's about a very intentional seizing of the Christian faith in order to become conservative. And it is not a hypothetical. This is, there is a very real thing where people were like, oh, all the Christians, how in the world are you going to get them to become more conservative? And they're like, we're going to have to hijack a lot of their culture. It's going to take decades. They were willing to go hundreds of years in order to do this. Um, and slowly and systematically, when you think of evangelicals today, you think of Trump Bibles and, and uh, Christian nationalists and things that they used to deny and deny and deny until they finally said, yeah, we're Christian nationalists. So what? What's so bad about that? It's like, well, you knew what was bad about it for hundreds of years because you denied it. You had to deny over and over and over until you finally said, you know what? Maybe I am a Christian nationalist. Let me go ahead and just prove everybody right. The spiritual element in this can't be ignored because this is how cults survive. Mm -hmm. It's not about the logic. Uh, Jeremiah, you brought up a, a great point about how the goalposts will shift with these people. That it's they will just say, oh, you know, it was about this, but now it's not about this anymore. Listen to Matt Walsh on any given day and just how Matt Walsh yesterday will can't contradict Matt Walsh today and all his followers will just suck it up. You use Matt Walsh's same logic and just being like, oh, like, oh, real mature, make fun of somebody's looks. And then look at how often Matt Walsh makes fun of somebody's looks and you just go, is there any value this man has? And these are the people doing the manuscript. <laughs> Joe, Jordan Peterson may be one of the best examples because he was a hero to me when he was writing The 12 Rules of Life, yep. which are fantastic rules. I love The 12 Rules of Life. He used to be a good psychiatrist. Yes. One of the ways that you can tell that somebody has fallen into the manosphere is they betray their own rules. In the case of The 12 Rules of Life, Jordan Peterson, I mean, what, rule, rule six, set up your house in perfect order before you criticize the world? Yeah. I mean, he will say it. He will be like, oh, I'm having mental health issues. I really need to get off of Twitter. I'm, I've handed somebody else the keys. I've told them not to give it back. And literally within an hour is just like, these trans authoritarians think they can turn my body into whatever they want to do. And you're like, okay, didn't you say you needed to give up the keys? Like you admitted, I'm saying stupid things. I have a problem. Jordan Peterson used to be the guy who you turn to where it's like, it's okay. Admit you have a problem and get better. Now he's not. And a lot of this is because we have forfeited our true spirituality, which is a walk with the Holy Spirit. It, anybody with a clean conscience doesn't need a Bible as much as they need the Holy Spirit to say, man, I'm not sure what to do in this situation. God, can you help me? I'm really in the dark here and I want to do something right. And they end up doing something wrong because they forfeit honestly, the Bible as well, but they forfeit the Holy Spirit first and foremost by saying, I, I am going to trade this in, and hopefully what I can get return is community. One of the things that um, AA brought up, community is a huge part of this. I can mm -hmm. get, and Rose, you brought this up too, I can get a thousand clicks, likes, if I bash on women. 
I can do it okay. right now. I could literally go online. I could say something completely screwed up. What, what Tim Pool the other day, like uh, I laugh when women in New York get punched in the face, right? <sighs> I can literally, anybody can do this, right? I can literally do that and get a thousand likes. I have gotten a thousand likes on a post like three times ever in my whole life. And I could do it in an instant because the community is so tight. So one of the things to counter this, if I'm to offer like a solution to this problem, is that if we are going to counter this at all, we have to be willing to do the same. When you see somebody posting the right thing or doing a positive thing, how much are you willing to give them a like, give them a share, give them positive reinforcement because they desperately uh -huh. need it. And also, yeah, like they'll get likes, but they won't get engagement. I think like people don't usually take the time to comment on things that they agree with. You know, they'll just heart react it and move on. So yeah, I have been making a point. Like if I really agree with something, to try to leave a comment because then you know social media algor algorithms will boost it. And also, yeah. like so, just to piggyback off that, real quick, uh, it does both. Christianity and atheism a disservice when people like Jordan Peterson are, are involved. Because first off, that rule, you know, get your mental house in order be before you fuck with other people's shit, basically. Uh, that's already Matthew 7. You already have it. And then, if you, say, read Jordan Peterson's Rules for Life instead of read Matthew 7, they will get a botched non-Christian version of Christianity. He doesn't even really identify with Christianity. He says, if I recall correctly, he's not a believer. He just says that he uses the concepts of Christianity. And you know, there's 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 a term in the Bible for that. It's like, maybe, maybe there's maybe there's a problem with that. And so when you start to get these people to like seed the ground um, to authoritarians and to uh, the like basically antichrist you get people who can hijack it who can appear as an angel in white um, and sound awesome because they're saying shit other people already said but they're sticking their cock in it that's all it is and so I mean in, in all fairness haven't these haven't these ideas been you know laundered and recycled yes. a million times already so but like, Ma but yeah. Ma Matthew's... Not like, I don't think he's ripping off the Bible. I think he's just taking ideas that have existed throughout civilizations over and over, and, have... and just yeah, well, it's just recycling. I think ideas. he conflated the ability to help individuals with the ability to help everybody, and uh, let himself lose sight of what he originally stood for in the first place. Yeah, yeah. and but, he should have stayed a psychiatrist. But like, that's the thing. It's like that. That's the reason I'm saying that, though, is because if somebody already said it better, then there's no need for you to say it. And Matthew 7, 4 is already great for saying that, and if you're a Christian, you should probably quote Matthew 7, 4 and not Jordan Peterson. But there's the other half <laughs> oh, of the absolutely. problem, like we went over, uh, like, like I've gone over on, you know, multiple discussions about Christianity recently, uh, a lot of Christians ain't about the Bible too much. And that, <laughs> as a result, you get these people who, when you read the Matthew 7, 4, they're like, oh, that's mean. That convicts me. I don't like that. And so they don't like that. They don't read Matthew. They don't like the verses that are likely to make them feel worse about their personal position, both in the eyes of the world and in the eyes of God, because they've conflated the two and jockeyed for some sort of ego. Well, you know, the Bible says something about them repeatedly. Jesus says well, that they have Christians their reward. How many actually read their book, though? Yeah! Like it's a problem, I mean, ain't it? there's no faster way to become an atheist than actually reading the Bible. Well, or <laughs> the opposite is like, if you actually want to be devoted, you should know what you're talking about. And a lot of these people, they're not, they're not, they're in it so that they can get the aesthetic appeal and maybe get some hopium to be in heaven and not like suffering anymore because they're suffering in their main lives. So they use this as hopium or their kind of way to escape. And they oftentimes aren't that serious about the actual praxis, about the actual mm -hmm. message. They're like, they're like, you know, when the Mises caucus didn't like getting Mises read to them. Um, you know, <laughs> it's like that because when you don't want to read your source material, it's because you're using your source material as an escapist route rather than actually like, you know, a lifestyle choice or like a personal exactly. way to get better. 
And, like, these people, they don't want to get better. They want to, like, be told that they're above other people. That those people, those demons at the bottom, those anonymous troll demons are the real problem. And they're not. The, the real problem is oftentimes within the self. And the Manosphere doesn't want to admit that. The Manosphere wants to make it seem like the men have been disbarred their position and must take it back. And maybe uh -huh. in certain places, yeah, you should. But you should take it back from the people who took it, and that's not women, that's not trans people, that's the state. But that yes. conversation would mean that you couldn't use the state against these people because you would be enabling the machine that crushes you, and that um, would be, you know, convicting of the self. It would mean that maybe you have to, like, alter some shit and improve yourself, and you couldn't just blame other people, and that's not the point. Um, also... Earth Nerd in chat says he's suffering having ended up there and they have to and, and and they suffer to get there. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly that. Like it's 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 all about like trying to get people on the same train of suffering as you so that you can then say, "See, you're suffering. That's pretty bad, ain't it?" It's like Fight Club, you know, treat them like shit until they're beaten into shape and then trauma bond with them to the uh, to, to 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 the end of getting them to join your cult personality your cult of power your amusingly that's the same tactics i'm sure the military uses to get their armies in line yes it's literally the same sure brainwashing is. bullshit i can tell you from first-hand experience yeah because you're, you're, you're a vet right yep yeah so you can okay let's talk about this let's sidebar here and just talk about for i don't know you know four or five minutes let's talk about the fact that the military engages the same pseudo-masculine shit and the sheepdog shepherd kind of sheep bullshit. Um, and like we have to be the violence so that we, we're rough men doing shit on weak men's behalf, blah, 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 blah. Those weak men couldn't live oh, without yeah, us. Thank you. Thank us for our service. Talk about that for a bit. Oh, so, so um, there's, so it's actually interesting. If, uh, hold on one second, let me, uh, let me get to where I won't have any interruptions. Okay, while you get there, halfway going to bed. While you right, get... no, no, I'm good. Okay, I'm good cool, now. cool. I just needed to walk outside cool, the porch. Cool. All right, so um, basically, what you're dealing with is you're dealing with two kinds of military service members. You're the kind that are hip to the bullshit and the kind that invented the bullshit. Uh, I would say that the split is probably like maybe eighty twenty and seventy thirty on a on a good day for mm -hmm. um, you know people who are buying the bullshit versus people who are not buying it. Um, and effectively it goes like this. Most of your military members have 100% bought into it and are on board with the hoo -ah bullshit and the, we're the guardians, we're the sheepdogs, we're the, the protectors. Um, the only thing I will say is that almost no military member actually holds to the thank me for my service because most people, even the ones that have bought into the bullshit, have more reverence for the dead and find and, – and the general – the general consensus is the only people who deserve your thanks are not here to receive it, um, which is respectable, at least in general. But besides that, most military members, I would say, are definitely buying in on the bullshit and effectively see themselves as the only real Americans because they've been taught since the moment they raise their hand and sign their signature that they are the only things that keep freedom alive in America. And that, you know, like they're, they're the ones standing between us and the enemy at the gates, which is always threatening the gates and ready to come through. Every single basic training class, every single AIT class is trained to expect the next war, even if there isn't one on the table. I thought that I was going to be in North Korea when I was going through training back in 2015. And uh, look at us now. North Korea hasn't even been in the news for like two months. Um, <laughs> but yes, they they absolutely sell that lie and about 80 percent of your service members will buy it and i would say the other 20 are are literally just like man what the fuck like this is the stupidest place i have ever seen my yeah, recruiter lied to me so seriously oh yeah absolutely so well, my recruiter li literally lied high? to me like it's that mm -hmm. the number of people who actually buy the bullshit's that high it's not you know people who are like okay it's probably bullshit but like i need somebody to pay for my college or pay for my health care so, or something the problem is is that uh it depends on when you're joining so i would wager okay. that now so let me let me preface this by saying i haven't been in under the biden administration whatsoever i got out immediately preceding covid uh Good. so i yeah so i didn't have to have the shot while i was in service which is great but regardless um so 
I would say probably now it's edging more towards 4060, but that's just from the tabs that I still have with my other buddies who did not leave. But uh, while I was in, it was Trump time. And so almost everybody was a uh, card carrying Republican loving Trump. And there was very few actual libertarians that I that I met uh, or libertarian minded mm-hmm. people. But I think it was more because the the man in, in charge was popular among the military in general. Biden is very much not popular. Biden isn't well, popular. A lot of the liber- oh, sorry. <laughs> I just I'm being I'm <laughs> being a cut. Go ahead. What, what were you saying, Rose? Oh, yeah. Uh, what was I saying? Um, well, it seems like a lot, like, I mean, because a lot of the best libertarians, you know, are ex-military, because, of course, exactly, you know, like, yep. seeing the U.S., um, seeing the atrocities committed by the U.S. empire up close is a great way to turn mm-hmm. in against it. But it seems like a lot of them kind of become libertarians after they've gotten out or, you know, near the end, not, you know, yeah. uh, while they're actively in the military. Uh, I'll tell you, um, uh, my situation might be a little bit weird. I actually became an anarchist while on flight to a foreign country for orders. Uh, <laughs> I listened to uh, The Ethics of Liberty by Murray Rothbard, and oh, it, was wow. like a, it was like a 13-hour flight. I was already like you know halfway through the book when I got on it, so I finished it during the flight, and by the end of it, I was like, well, shit, I'm an anarchist now. I started as a constitutionalist, <laughs> and now I'm an anarchist. I can't argue with this but man. But you were still uh, like... You couldn't just leave, though, obviously. Nope. No. Well, I mean, I was hip to the bullshit before then anyway, because there's one thing that drives me insane, and that's procedure over efficiency. Scrum. And that's all, all the Army ever was, was procedure over efficiency. We're going to do it the right way before we do it the best way. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. But uh, to answer your question, I feel like basically – Uh, So there's this, I don't know if any of you guys have ever heard of this phrase, but there's a very commonly said phrase in the military. It's called the big green weenie, and everybody gets fucked by it. And that is basically the idea that if you are in the army, the army will fuck you, even if you're only in there for like two years. It'll find a way to fuck you. The The big green weenie finds everyone, and it always comes unlubed. So I think you probably get more libertarians after they finish their contract because they've just got done gotten fucked you know and they just got out and they have perspective on it i think that a lot more people become more liberty-minded after the military as opposed to in it but then you have people who spend their entire careers in there and they are lifelong you know regime supporters no matter Mm -hmm. who the fucking regime is basically yeah right then they don't know what to do with the rest of their lives so then they try to get in with like private contractors or other oh absolutely they, uh, they, or they, they become cops or some stupid shit like that. They've spent their entire lives being hammers. And so when they uh-huh. finally get out, all they're looking for is the next nail. Right. Yeah. Or, I mean, I also imagine you just wouldn't want to admit that, like, your entire life, you know, not only was it a lie, but that you, you know, killed a bunch of people for no mm-hmm. reason. Exactly. Like I've, met men, I've met men who I want to respect and who I would respect under any other context, but I know that they've killed people who did not deserve it just because mm-hmm. they were told to. And it makes it really hard for me to actually respect the people. Right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's, 100%. it's insane what it does to you. Like some of my best friends have probably killed people, but the way that the army works, you can't even be sure if you're a murderer. Uh-huh. Unless you did it in daylight mm-hmm. and got to well, see the body, you know. Right. What I, mean? I mean, yeah. Not only are you told, but like you're also okay. You can't leave, or you'll be, you know, caged. But then they also set it up so that you know you basically become family with the people, you know, with get yeah, your fellow soldiers. So then you're in a situation mm-hmm. where you know not only will you be killed, but you have you're obligated to protect them, or you have to see them die because you know you didn't do what you could to protect them. So, mm-hmm. I mean, this is all deliberate to. Oh, yeah. No, it it absolutely. The longer that you're in the military, uh, let me say like this, the more combat you see in the military, the more Mm -hmm. likely you will to effectively pigeonhole yourself into having to buy it. Because if you don't, you'll commit suicide. And that's honestly, I I believe, one of the reasons why there's such a high suicide rate. Sorry, go ahead. I've met like Iraq war veterans who, you know, while the Iraq war was still going on, like they, uh, you know, they they get out and then they just they wanted to go back they're like i want to go back because i have to protect the people who are still mm. there and they're like i'm going to kill as many of those assholes as i possibly can life Not really mm-hmm. you know these are people who also had people like show up at their door in the middle of the night saying okay fight for us or we'll kill your entire family so now yep. they're up against the americans and they're you know you know laser guided bullets or whatever 
Yeah, Life is Good by Ministry is the song that always comes to mind. Um, fucking... The whole, and, and, and the great thing about that song, by the way, if anybody wants to listen to it and be full of bitter rage like me, um, you can too! Uh, that song is excellent because basically the entire song is about how the military fucked you over, fucked you up, and now you're fucked up so much that you just, you need it. You, you go back because it's the only thing you know. You're institutionalized into that life and into accepting the bullshit that's associated with it. And so, like, in the end of the song, even after he admitted that he just wants out and that nothing is okay and that he's, like, maladjusted now and he even sees his own kid in the same way that he sees the, the, the enemy operatives because they were kids too, um, he just, like, well, I just, you know... The end of the song is him basically going back in <laughs> because he uh, he needs to. That's all he has, um, you know. It's it, and it's the same kind of mentality as uh, fucking what was it? Ha Habeas Corpses by ELP, uh, where there's this entire like it, I forget what it it was called the the rest of the song, but it was like this entire song was a sci-fi epic. And this guy was basically the executioner for a fascist uh, space government, and his mm -hmm. whole his whole job was to uh, execute the prisoners. And uh, he it, like he sees this chick. He's like, you know, it, there's still a little bit of human left in his skull. And he's like, he he goes on this journey with this 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 woman, but then you find out that like this woman he helped escape, he didn't actually help her escape, and it was in his mind. And once he snaps out of it, he's told to fire his weapon, and he's like, yes, sir. And he, <sighs> yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, fucking, it's a morbid song. I, that's the thing you'll find about, about a lot of my fucking taste in art. It's like, yeah, let's just delve in further to the fucking bullshit. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so yeah. it's basically like there's that. an excellent song. Yeah, 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 yeah. That whole uh, album is fucking there's great. A, there's an excellent song that uh that goes through the same themes uh about the the first song that you were talking about mm -hmm. uh where it was i think it's called a uh, winner take all by aesop rock and basically it's three verse structure sets up the newbie the somewhat experienced and the very experienced soldier on different combat ops uh and it sort of takes you through the mindset as his moral compass degenerates over each verse so at the beginning he's hesitant and he's doing everything appropriately and he's like i'm protecting stuff and doing as best i can and you know and then in the middle verse it's just like oh, i'm just going where they tell me to and killing who i have to and you know just trying to get by and in the last verse it's like i fucking need this you know it's like this is the only thing that gets me up in the morning is killing people and it's like yeah that's what it fucking does to you over time it erodes your moral compass the more you have to be evil to your fellow man yeah 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 so and and that's the thing that I wanted to bring that up regarding. It's like the same mentalities are wrought and maintained through the manosphere, through a lot of this shit. Mm -hmm. They want to get you on board. They want to give you women as, it, like, instead of having, like, Hajis or somebody else that you're trying to go against, they give you women. Them, them be half a the Kong. fucking population. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> so, well, the, the, and then they'll put on this helmet. They'll tell you, you know, you're breaking free of the Matrix, you know. Jo uh, you know, fucking join the Tate army. You'll be based. And then what is it actually? You're advertising him on TikTok. You get these cult leaders who are, like, at the front of it and being like, well, if you, if, if you join my Totally Not a Pyramid scheme and uh, help advertise me on social media, you'll make money. And it's like, they'll have, like, certain members who made enough money. And they called it the PhD program, the Pimp and Hose Degree program. Oh, and it's like, yeah, let's, let's devolve your fucking moral compass. Let's make you just as bad as a guy who groomed a 15-year-old uh, to scam. But remember, guys, Christ is king. Yeah, right? <laughs> he, gr he groomed a 15-year-old till she was 17 so he could fly her to London, fuck her, and put her in like his his pimping business where she would be his bottom bitch as still a child um but legal technically um because he wasn't in a position of trust and that country has fucked up age of consent laws um and in doing so in being all of this corrupt bullshit 
he eventually had somebody on the hook that he could use to recruit other people and that's why she's now implicated in the sex tra trafficking bullshit because she helped him do it she was at the ground level while she was an adult she's getting less sentence because she was groomed into it but she helped people do this and she helped keep them in line and she helped like ma maintain the uh, the culture and the mentalities that created this sort of shit and then um he beat her uh on camera and probably a lot off camera said in private voice messages that he was a monster and he loved raping her the more that she wow. li didn't like it the more he liked doing it to her um and this is your masculine role model because you're a piece of shit being bought it's yeah. so fucking infuriating yeah, and yeah, there are no. actually young um, men who think that's, you know, what being a man is, apparently. Yeah, no, it, it is pretty, it's terrifying. I have really. no other example. And then one of the frustrating things that about it, Peter too, Griffin. is with, because I think one of y'all mentioned that they do a little bit of ghost post moving as well, is on one breath, they're trying to teach the player lifestyle, but on the other breath, they're trying to evoke this nostalgia to people who weren't around at the time of the exactly. awesomeness of the 50s and uh -huh. 60s that, and that, that quote golden age and and then funny enough it even ties into the little talk about the army and everything is it's like okay they they want this whole they they claim to want everybody to have like the whole like nice house in the suburb with a white picket fence and the wife that stays at home with the kids and all of that while you go be the the bread one on one income but what's also frustrating about it is that Besides the fact that, for one, like, the thing they want to make men into kind of counters that, even that, you know, mythos, what they fail to mention about how that became what it was, was one, amusingly enough, it was because of the creation of the GI Bill and lots of military spending at the time, but then also as kind of a precursor to what I'm planning to make a recurring topic, you know, with your platform, is the fact that they engaged in urban renewal to make this happen where they bulldoze and displace tons of communities, turn, like, prioritize cars so that General Motors and oil company can make money. They Don't. separate, because they displace so many communities, even cut them off from the downtown area to have this happen, and then use tons of public spending to have these car-centric suburbs, the white picket fence and the whole thing. It's like, this whole thing that they're thinking is the American dream that they get, you know, like, they're you know they get the hots for whenever they get pandered to by these people was built enough on the foundation of the state creating the environment that led to their loneliness because i would argue that cutting people off from downtown areas making it more likely for not many people to have that third place that they spend time at that real sense of community they have whenever they go outside of their house in past times open this environment that made it to where people substituted real community for the internet. Mm -hmm. And now oh, absolutely. we have this community on the internet who, like every community, with very few exceptions, is some kind of grift where they're trying to get you bought into a system blaming the other guy for all of your problems rather than self-reflecting and improving. Rather than like getting past your trauma, you just pass it on because I turned out fine. No, the fuck you didn't. <laughs> um, and all of this shit just ends up with this mentality of toxicity. Who am I blaming this week? Is it a trans person? Is it a Muslim? Is it brown invaders at the southern border? Is it them atheists? Is it them Christians? Is it them whatever? The thing is, it's all garbage. Black people. Well, Black well, Lives well. Matter is looting your business. Probably not. Um, you probably don't have a business. You're probably a wagey who, like, you know, is just as fucked by the rest of the system as anybody else is, and the homeless people you're angry at this week don't have shit to do with it. Maybe be more worried about wage theft and downsizing and AI than you are about fucking, like, shoplifters. Uh, maybe we should be more worried about the ever-encroaching surveillance state than we are about some homeless dude building a shack under a bridge because it's way too substantial and they might think that they like have a right to be a human in a human world with a basic level of existence potential. Maybe, I've gotta, maybe... I've got to get going. Yeah. Thank you for having me, guys. Oh. All right, be well. Yeah, good Thank you. you. Thank you good so much. Bye. No problem.
I think I think the saddest part, you know, with people who fall into these circles too, like because I, I, thankfully, it's only been on social media. These are not people I've known in real life. But like I have seen people fall and like go down this rabbit hole firsthand. Like people who I, a couple people who I had on my like Facebook friends list for a while. Like usually it starts out as you know them having obvious self esteem issues, but and it usually starts as them complaining about their difficulties dating. Like these are people who clearly you know needed the, to take some time to work on themselves before worrying about relationships. But a lot of people seem to think that a relationship is going to improve their life when. No, you need to get your own life in order before you try to bring someone else into it. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, but then, you know, usually they are, you know, shy or otherwise socially awkward. So they're having a difficult time dating. So then they resort to things like dating apps, which, you know, like Jeremy already pointed out, they just kind of commodify dating. And also in general, the people who have to use dating apps, I mean, no offense, because I know people have found, you know, good relationships on them. But in general, uh, yeah, people who are what you'd call, you know, high quality, for lack of a better term, don't have to use them because they can meet people in real life. Um, they get, you know, they have a few dates with people who turn out to be, you know, shitty for one reason or another. So then they get this idea in their mind that, oh, well, you know, all women are like this. They're all, you know, just cheap and, you know, are using you for a free meal and, uh, or they all have OnlyFans or some other bullshit. Yeah. And, you know, then they, so they can't, you know, find themselves a fulfilling relationship. Then they get this idea into their head that they, that they're being deprived of something that they should have an inherent right to. Yeah. Which is, you know, marriage and, you know, a family, which they seem to view as some sort of little personal fiefdom where they're king and they have, you know, a wife to take care of their needs and kids who, you know, adore them and look up to them. Maybe you're not entitled to it. So, Maybe earn where you put your cock. Like, and treat it yeah, more than exactly. a place to put your cock. Right? And it's yeah. not, like, seriously, it's not even that difficult. Just, like, don't be a piece of shit. But, yeah. But then they just get shittier and shittier. They're like, oh, it's all because of feminism. If that's why I can't get a date. You know, these mm -hmm. women don't know their place. Or, you know, now that they can have careers, they don't have to settle for us. Or... Yeah, basically it's people who can't compete in the buyer's market, so they want the market rigged in their favor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then that's why, like, both, like, both those people and, like, the super side of the rad film that's captured, like, you know, the public consciousness, those two should just fuck each other at this point. Because yes. they're the same people. <laughs> oh, definitely. Well, and that's that's one of the yeah. things that's there are, funny. There are female incels, too. I've encountered them. Like, they're, yeah, usually... Yeah, really gross women who think that they should be able to get, you know, like, super hot, you know, fit guys without putting in any effort. Yeah. Yeah, and that's one of the things that's fun is, like, when you start to look into these things, you start to realize just how much overlap there is between, for instance, the alt-right and some of these feminist circles, and then the alt-right mm -hmm. and also these alt-right circles full of the manosphere. And, like, it's w when you get into these sorts of spaces... Um, you're, you're getting into this mentality. You're getting into this mentality that, like, um, you know, you're entitled to something and that because you didn't get it, you deserve it, you know. Uh, Lily Alexander put out a great video. I shared it in my uh, Discord um, in a channel that's specifically for this, this subject, the, the divide uh, section. And basically, uh, this video is called The Feminist to Far Right Pipeline. And it's excellent. People should watch that video because it actually really goes well into these subjects of like, you know, maybe there are some critiques of certain feminists and trans and whatever spaces, but a lot of these feminists were just reactionary and they used feminism as a locus for their reactionary mentalities and they didn't actually give a shit about helping women. Maybe huh. it's the same Typical. thing on the like, you know, right with these dudes. Um, where a lot of these dudes have done the same thing, and that's why they're so quick to blame trans people, to blame migrants, to blame black people, to blame uh, women, because they've gotten into that mentality of, it's somebody else. I don't have to fix myself. I don't have to solve my own fucking problems. And to be clear, there are a lot of legitimate issues. Cassie, Cassie J's documentary was actually very good. I still recommend people watch that. Yeah. But, like, 
when you start there and you end up saying, man, H. Pearl Davis's song about how Hitler might have been right was pretty based, am I right? Ugh. I have not heard it, but yeah. Thankfully, I, know I thing that exists. Wasn't she just trying to get attention from Nick Fuentes or something? I wouldn't care if that was her reason, because it doesn't matter. Her And, like, that's the ultimate thing with a lot of these people. They're just grifting anyway. Like, H. Yeah. H. Pearl Davis... Like, she has this view of what being a high and l- low-value uh, woman is, and she's uh-huh. constantly using it to put down other women. And then when Piers Morgan says, well, doesn't that make you low-value? Aren't you a piece Oof. of shit? Uh, she's like, y- you know, yeah, I, I am. Uh, and she's, like, very very uncomfortable that he's bringing that up because the point of it isn't to be a better person. The point is to put other people down so that you can justify your position in the social hierarchy above them. Uh-huh. It's crabs in a bucket, not lobsters. Um, yeah. And so, like, when you get into this mentality, it's very toxic. The, the mentality is it's somebody else. And, like, uh, in chat, uh, I think our politics reflect a greater pattern of thinking. Structure-focused thinking and creative-focused thinking, they can be balanced to work well together. Yeah, they, they get people split on these sorts of issues. Well, no, but I'm the rational male, says Rolo Tomasi. Probably not while you're telling people to get vasectomies so they can fuck as much as they want while they're young without any consequences. No, in fact, the consequence is that when they eventually get that reverse, they might not be fertile anymore, you piece of shit. But you didn't care because you were getting a bunch of people validated for their, like, ability to fuck around as much as they want. Oh, and... <laughs> the funniest thing about that was when tra- conservative Inc. even decided that was a take too bad for them. Yeah. He's like, it's not advice, bro. It's not advice. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What was this? Like, he, he has something... this, yeah, he has this list where he, he put out this list. <laughs> Let me pull it up. But like based... the quickest path to being a high value man or something. Like yeah. That. And, and like the, the, the thing was a tweet, you know, it's not like it was, you know, some really comprehensive thing. But, like, he he put out this thing uh, saying that what you should do if you want to be a high-value man is do not get married. Avoid, <laughs> avoid family creation. Vasectomy yeah. in your 20s. Lift consistently. Eliminate all sedations. Good. Those, those two are good. Four and five yeah. are good. Learn game and networking, which is what you have, like, why you have to avoid the family creation and get the vasectomy so that you can try to, like, learn to manipulate people because you learn to manipulate women. Um, play to your strengths. Build wealth. Basically, stack your money so that you can, like, like have that translate to a life of fucking, like, you know, capitalist success so that you can uh-huh. signal to the women that might be into that that you're an awesome partner without ever actually fixing your own problems and resist easing up on your focus. So basically the only three ones from that that are good in like in, in their total is like fucking lift consistently, eliminate all sedations, and resist easing up on your focus. Those are good, but the rest of them are basically how to be a fuckboy, but also be called based by the people who also call other people fuckboys for doing what you're doing, and the people who call women hoes for doing the same shit. It's hypocrisy. It's yeah. dumb. Oh, yeah. No, the double standard is ridiculous. Look, I mean, by all means, live your life however you want, but yeah, don't pretend that, yeah, being a fuckboy is acceptable if you're also going to bash women for the same thing. And it was so bad it's, that even I mean, it's either, it's either, either okay, back. it's either, it's either a, an okay way to live your life or it isn't. Like, fucking pick one. I, I hate the double standards. Yeah. It was such a bad take that even Sneeko pushed back on it. It was the funniest thing ever. Yeah, I mean, high value is very subjective, so I guess, yeah, sure, you'd be high value to people who also don't want kids. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, Yeah. like, because basically they're trying to tell these people how to be, I guess, Drake or Jay-Z or their favorite rapper, in a way. Right. Yeah, <laughs> as and, if they're good role models. And that like, is. that's the thing. The Sneeko situation is actually a good thing to bring up because Sneeko is a good example of somebody who was influenced by the manosphere and now latches onto their cocks like anybody's coattails. And basically, <laughs> like, what he does, the Gokunaru vid on him is excellent. Watch it. Anybody who has not seen the Gokunaru takedown of Sneeko, 
um, do that because basically that takedown was an excellent way to basically go over the fact that he imitates people to follow in their shadows. And the latest imitation he's doing now, because he went so hard against the people like Rolo Tomasi, um, when people in the Manosphere started to turn on him for that, he was like, you know what? The Manosphere is bad, actually, and you know what you should do? You should be Muslim. And yeah. <laughs> and as a Muslim, he's not very Muslim. He and uh, oh, yeah, Andrew those Tate... Oh, yeah, threesomes. <laughs> yeah. Got it, too. He, he and, and, and Andrew Tate are both pulling the Muslim shit now, and neither of them are actually following the Quran. And if they were, no. they would be much better people, but they're not. None of these people are authentic spirituali spiritualists, like, with very few exceptions. And those very few exceptions don't get the shit tons of followers, because part of the point is, we just latched onto something else. This week it's Islam, and now... We're going to use this Islam as a way to, like, piggyback off of their treatment of women in the mainstream context and say that, no, in fact, we were right because Islam says it so. Before it was like Rolo Tomasi says it so. Before it was like uh, Andrew Tate says it so. Nick Fuentes says it so. Now it's uh, Allah says it so. No, in fact, the Quran has very specific instructions against your lifestyle, against your mentality, against your focus, against your culture, against you. And you haven't read the Quran, you stupid hacks. But and neither has Myron. <laughs> yeah, in that sum. And so, like, that's the thing these people do. They will bounce from subject to subject, from justification to justification. They don't give a fucking shit. The, I mean, these books are vague enough that you can read whatever you want into them, but whatever. I mean, sure, but, like, at the same time, there's a baseline of, like, conduct, and you can't be doing what they're doing. You can't be, like, advocating this salacious fucking hedonistic bullshit and then say, oh, but I, uh, I, I, I pray to Allah. I, I do the, the, the thing at the proper time. Um, so, you know, no, in fact, either be a Muslim or don't, but don't pretend to be one and not. Like, shit or get off the pot. Yeah, it's kind of like calling yourself an anarchist, but then using Stalinist policies to force your vision on the world. <laughs> Pete Q. Huh? Yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, Hody, you probably want to say something on the spiritualism thing. I mean, one of the toughest parts of this is the Bible says to use righteous judgment and also not to judge. And unfortunately, the Greek doesn't give us any help on this. It's the same word. A lot of times it's like, oh, they just use the same word twice or something like that. And so people are like, well, I don't want to. And you'll see the right wingers used to this to their advantage because they'll be like, who are you to judge Andrew Tate's faith? Who are you to judge, you know, um, this person's faith? And then all of a sudden when somebody is like a degenerate Right, like a Christian. Watch how like less angry they are at An Andrew Tate for being a Christian. And then like, I mean, I don't know if you guys remember the outrage when like it was just a bunch of like gay and trans people holding Bibles in front of their church, like dancing, doing like a TikTok or something. And the, they went out of their minds. Like, mm. how dare you associate with God or whatever? And I'm like, how dare they associate with God? Like, what is going on? And they're like, well. Okay, look, I'm judging now, even though I've told people not to judge, you know, but I'm judging now because, I mean, it's obvious to everybody in the rest of the world, they're gay and trans people, and they're happy, right? But, you know, they said, well, I'm turning it back on now because the Bible says it's righteous judgment. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what is this righteous judgment? What is it? And Jesus gives us an amazing, like, analogy for how to analyze what is sin and what is not sin. He said, good seeds don't produce bad fruit. They can't. Mm -hmm. Good seeds can't produce bad fruit. Bad seeds can't produce good fruit. So really, it's cause and effect. Now, here's the thing. Would it be sin for me to be gay? I can tell you it absolutely would because the fruits of that would be absolutely terrible. You could ask my partner and he'd be like, he's not very cuddly. He doesn't like my facial hair. He's constantly dogging on me to get it waxed. He says he doesn't like my penis and it would be a <laughs> sin, right? Like the fruits of that would just be sinful. When you force a gay person <laughs> 
to try and be straight? What are the fruits of that? You don't have to judge. What are the fruits? Measure it out. What are their relationships like when you force them to do it? When you drive your trans kid to commit suicide, you're going to tell me, oh, you're going to you're judging me for driving my trans kid to suicide. No, I'm measuring the fruits. I'm not judging you. The fruits of your labor were driving people to death, was driving God's children to death. And so this is why, like, Using righteous judgment is indeed a very important thing, and the right wing is very all about it right now, but they are very incorrect about what that means. Mm -hmm. Now, to be fair, the left also botches this, and that's a whole that's probably a subject for another conversation. Uh -huh. Manosphere has taken advantage of this as much as they can and just been like, well, we're just, you know, we're, we don't want you to judge. And like I said, they turn it off and on, and they don't want to hear the analysis of how you use righteous judgment. Christ tells us how, right? They just like to cut it off at the judge righteously thing, so therefore I can judge whatever I want to because I am righteous, and yes. I know what's right, and you do not. You know? It's supposed to be not judging hypocritically, which, of course, a lot of them do. Sure. Also that, right? Like when we mentioned the turning it on and turning it off, and they will absolutely do that. They will judge hypocritically. They'll judge the ways they can't. Like they'll say, you know, Jordan Peterson and, and Andrew Tate, the whatever podcast, the fresh and fit, they, here's one thing about the Manosphere. <laughs> There's, because it's the internet age, there is no shortage of bad people that you can find on the other side, of bad behavior, of bad actors. And I am not going to sit here and say that a lot of the behavior that they've analyzed is absolutely fantastic. One of the things that the TERFs, um, that the feminist movement failed to realize to in time and it created a lot of TERFs historically, like a lot of trans-exclusionary radical feminists, was that, oh, these people weren't actually feminists. They just hated men. And you go Miss back Sanders. and you look at like J.K. Rowling stuff, and it's like, oh, well, we said, oh, what a great feminist the whole time, when in reality, it is very obvious from what she was saying, she they weren't it wasn't grounded in loving women it was grounded in hate it was grounded in hating men and so when they you know when what was very predictable happened you know like we can't sit here and be surprised when it happened so with a lot of these manosphere guys we need to recognize what the feminists did not recognize with the turfs we need to be like are we actually teaching men self-help or are we getting them involved in a pipeline? Because self-help is actually really important. This is something that the left has kind of abandoned. If you want to see like a like a bread tuber get absolutely dogged, watch when they tell their audience like, hey guys, maybe you should work out and get some fresh air. Maybe it's, hey, oh, you're you're socially awkward? Maybe it's time to like take some therapy or, or work on that. And you watch the backlash that they get from that. Which, by the way, and two so, things. Everybody yeah. sub to four channels right now. Sub to Dreg, sub to Natural Hypertrophy, sub to Art Chad, and sub to Dang Dad. All four of those, just to piggyback off what you just said, because they're all about self-reflection and improvement and trying to be better, and that'll be a better community than a variety of the other. Go ahead, though, say more words. No, that's, I mean, this, that's a, I'm glad that you have like an actual, like actionable thing to do that. Dang dad is, is one that I click on, but like, there's a lot of these good communities out there. They're just not as outspoken and angry and cult-like as the manosphere. It's very easy to get involved with the manosphere. And that ease has a lot to do with it. Look at the economy and how things are going right now. People don't have a lot of time to do th something very time consuming. So when it's like, hey, build a base, build a YouTube channel, build this. Look at how many of our favorite YouTube channels today mired in anonymity for years before finally s sticking around long enough that people, you know, they built something, built a community. Well, people are desperate right now. You look at uh, within the last four years, I think it's something like, it used to be like 85% like two years ago, and now it's over 90% of people have said they've had to make significant life adjustments just to maintain their lifestyle mm. or have had to sacrifice 
the life that they used to live. People are hurting and people are struggling right now. Now, the economy has a lot to do with it, but this plays out socially. Is then now I don't have the time to just put in, oh, do a lot of work, do a lot of hard work building up yourself, read these books. People don't have time. We're in trouble. We're having difficult, you know, we barely have time for TikToks. It's no wonder that, look at the um, progression our social media has taken as the economy's gotten worse. We go, go from long form MySpace with huge posts to Facebook, which is pictures and and photos as well as long form posts, to Instagram, which is mostly pictures and a couple of words, to Twitter, which is 140 characters or less to TikTok, which is, do you have a nanosecond for something really <laughs> funny? Like, yeah. people don't have the time they used to have anymore because we're working harder. You look at the average American household and your work hours in, in the last 50 years, in our parents' lifetime, has gone from an average household working like 38 hours a week to working like 68 hours a week just to maintain the same life, you know? And it is a, it is a tough thing to see like, oh, single income, one person could do everything, now they can't. And so w when we recognize that these people are struggling, we also have to be sure that we recommend a prescription that is equally understanding of the time and the money constraints that they may have you know the manosphere is very easy sub to this and you'll get a thousand likes click on this very easy and so what we need to do is in response if we were to counter this manosphere is to bring up hey a lot of self-help stuff that is equally flash flashy funny easy and accessible and very easy to digest you know as opposed to what happens is the counter manosphere movement has kind of devolved into let's here's a huge book on it here's a tome on it here's a five hour long video for you to watch about why the manosphere is bad and it's like the only way you're going to do this is with a competing community is not to tear them down they're established it's to build yours up and we are spending a lot of time focused on the enemy and it's important to understand them but the takeaway we need to have from this conversation isn't how we derail them because that's not how cults fall apart cults fall apart how does daryl davis get people out of the kkk spend time with them tell them you love mm -hmm. them and give them daryl davis will tell you the biggest thing is giving them a new community okay when you have a bunch of evil people now look a lot of people in the manosphere see the hypocrisy subconsciously <laughs> or consciously but we tell ourselves i can't address that because these are all my friends these are this is my support system this is my they're game. my family I, now they're my family That's if i step out of line I'm out of the crowd. I'm in trouble. And you do look at these guys when they step out of line. Look at the Daily Wire right now. Look at a lot happens with incels when they step out of line and go, hmm, maybe I'm going to try this guy. I saw this video that's really helpful over here. And look at the backlash that they get from that. So what we're going to have to do is not the easy work of pointing out why, how the manosphere is bad. We could do that for hours. There is not a shortage of content on that. The hard part and the part that's actually going to be successful is building a new community and saying like, um, Rose, you mentioned earlier, how does it start? You see somebody mention some bad dates, bad relationships. We see their recruiting grounds all the time. Uh -huh. It's to outcompete them on those recruiting grounds. You're gonna have to be able to see that guy who said, oh, I had a bad date. And if you keep scrolling, the people in the manosphere are not gonna keep scrolling. Mm -hmm. Right, they'll be you like, have yeah, to go, did, hey. Did you know that that's because, you know, there is this, uh diabolical plot that all women are involved in to just use you for your money and then dump you yeah exactly right and yeah so much of this just ties like into the culture war bullshit too like i mean it, it ties into a lot of like what we're seeing in libertarian circles with the libertarian party but people are angry because they're being fucked over by the system this is by design and they need something to direct their anger at well directing it at you know the central, you know, the central banking cartels or, you know, the military industrial complex like that just it, it feels it like, doesn't you have know, a face. well, not just that, but like you're a complete nobody. You have no power against this, you know, kind of enemy being able to, you know, get angry at like, you know, LGBT influencers on the Internet, you know, claiming that they're the ones undermining Western civilization and, you know, yeah, brainwashing your kids. Like, you actually feel uh, like you can accomplish something by shitting on trans people on the internet or something. Yeah, and real quick, before we proceed too much further, I need to address something. So we've got somebody in chat who's a great example 
of the kinds of things that we're talking about here. Because uh, Inland Empire over here in chat is screaming about how, um, like, Red Pill isn't religious, and how the Manosphere isn't, and Peterson doesn't even like Andrew, lol. Um, well, first off, you're a great example of somebody who comes in halfway, um, or more, doesn't, like, know the context of a situation and assumes that we hate men. Uh, because we directly addressed a lot of this stuff early on, and we directly addressed the fact that men do have valid issues, and the fact that we don't take your exact position on this does not, in fact, mean that we're bought into some narrative. You're trying to essentialize us so that you can dismiss us, and essentialism and dismissal will get you nowhere here. Um, and the same point, uh, they don't actually improve anything. They don't improve relations, they don't pr improve your life, um, and I didn't deny at all that men face some legitimate issues. In fact, uh, I routinely talk about the issues men face. Uh, you might have even found my channel or something else that I was involved in because of that. Um, pretending that because we can briefly discuss the fact that uh, a group that you appreciate is flawed, um, like, that means that we're completely bought into the opposite is dumb. It's a false dichotomy. And the reason that I'm being very specific about this and saying that it's dumb and a false dichotomy is because this is the mentality that they have created in you. They have created the mentality that it's okay to dismiss somebody's entire persona, somebody's entire mentality, somebody's entire psychological framework, because they have different opinions than you on part of the issue, without like acknowledging any of the similarities. And in doing so, in buying this divide and conquer agenda, you are part of the problem you don't like. Um, I routinely bring up, for instance, certain courts favor men. The media treats men like dog shit and will throw them under the bus um, like at a moment's notice if, some, if they're accused of something. That's wrong. Um, they, like There's a significant amount of people in charge and in a lot of spaces that will automatically believe what's said about them regardless of any evidence and anything else. That's a problem. Uh, circumcision is genital mutilation, and the fact that it still routinely happens to uh, to infant boys um, here in the civilized world is evidence that it's anything but civilized. There are no <laughs> men's only domestic shelters, to my knowledge, still. That's a problem. The, the men's only domestic shelter that opened in Canada had to shut down due to a lack of funding, despite the fact that, like, you know, there are a ton of women's only funded shelters there, um, yep. and the overwhelming, like, truth is that there are some strong and stirring issues that should be discussed that won't be if the vision of these people that people have is that they are just petulant or they will create scenarios that aren't even real in order to be upset. I don't want the it, people, the, the, the authoritarian it, feminists to win, and because of that, you have to occasionally shut the fuck up and listen to people. Um, like, when we're, like, when we're going against the Manosphere, when we bring up a long series of valid issues and things that they said that were flatly unhelpful, unhealthy, incorrect, bigoted, evil, statist, whatever, and you can come in most of the way through the stream, start to police our words and our thoughts and tell us that we're bought into some agenda, when you don't know us and you don't have any intention on understanding what we're saying, you're the kind of person that the Manosphere has created, and that's exactly the kind of person that we shouldn't be. So, actually understand what we're talking about here before judging us. Read Matthew 7. I think that would help you a lot. Also, hello, Lizard. <laughs> this is how people are taught to think about politics in general, and yeah, it, it's so frustrating dealing with that mentality. Oh, you disagree with me on this? Okay, then you must be this, this, and this, and yeah, therefore you're bad. Yeah. yeah. And one of the frustrating things about it is because, of course, the freaking the, the, the state school system is not to actually educate people on anything or prepare uh -huh. them for life. They kind of play a part in this, too. Especially because... They somehow, at least in universities and to my understanding, elementary school stuff, they have found a way to present issues regarding, you know, like 
women's rights, civil rights, you know, history of past misdeeds done towards these groups and things like that. They found a way to present this in the most toxic way possible to where reactionary people where these words taste like ass when they hear it. <laughs> when it's spoken. And I almost I'm convinced it's on purpose. Uh were you saying something, Lizard? Oh my god, okay. Yeah, I've been trying to say something for like the past fucking twenty minutes. Ah. But my oh, sorry. Phone was for some reason. Um So I was just gonna say, uh basically on this is that I think that there are intentional state actors where it's like their job to go out and perpetuate this mentality online. And the purpose is is to keep the population divided and like fighting each other instead of focusing on the state, which is the main issue. Um, I mean, it makes perfect sense. It's divide and conquer tactics. So like, you know, you can sit here and like disprove it all you want and it's very valuable. But like, I think that there's always going to be people that are doing it and it's intentional and there's a purpose for it. And it's important to point that shit out. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, I frequently do. Cause like I, I said this earlier in the stream, like, uh, social media seems to, I mean they push all sorts of cultural or bullshit but I have noticed like in especially over the past year that it seems to have gotten worse the gender wars bullshit so yeah I, I usually will say wow social media algorithms really are pushing this gender war bullshit pretty hard like whenever I see something come up in my feed because yeah I mean that just comments like that kind of draw attention to the issue it might maybe I could be deluding myself, but maybe it will get people thinking, okay, yeah, this is clearly just, you know, rage bait. I should probably not, you know, waste mental energy getting angry about it or, you know, trying to argue against it. Just, yeah, keep scrolling. So, and real quick, well, uh, just to just to say this, um, I'm probably not going to respond to too many of these comments because they're pretty much all unconstructive and straw man. Um, and a good example of this is you saying Red Pill and Manosphere long existed before you normies heard Tate's name, LOL. I don't give a shit, he's not me, or Red Pill, or speaks for all men, and even broken clocks can be broken twice a day. Um, so, to be clear, go fuck yourself. Because if you read, <laughs> if you watch this stream over, this whole thing started us with us literally saying that and literally talking about some of the roots being much more reasonable than they are now, and saying things that, like, you would probably agree with. We established that early on before we talked about a lot of these problems with the way it modern presents. Um, you can go fuck yourself, <laughs> assuming that we don't already think the right thing, because we're not saying exactly what you want us to the whole time. Yeah. Always a ray of sunshine. But, I mean, I, I, yeah, I've said this before, but what what is particularly frustrating, like, a lot of the, you know, actual feminists and the men's rights activists do essentially want the same things. Like, you know, this whole idea that, you know, men should not, you know, show emotions, should not show, uh, because, you know, then they'll be considered weak, or that men, you know, should be expected to be sole providers and be able to sustain an entire family on one income. Like that, that is what feminists are referring to when they talk about toxic masculinity, that, you know, men always have to be tough, that, you know, they should, you know, be getting into fights to prove that they're manly. Like, again, like they, these groups want the same things, but then there's this, you know, stupid divide. Yeah. And, and like, to be clear, to answer this potentially final question from Inland Empire over here. Uh, why are you even, what are you even complaining about now? It just seems more like you're upset about pop culture people saying shit and not everyone of the ideology agreeing. I never said everyone in these spaces was automatically and completely bad and irrevocably and irredeemably evil. I said that there are still some elements of these spaces that are somewhat reasonable, um, and that there are, uh, but that the people who are public facing and have the most success with it are currently grifters. I'm saying that should be fixed. I'm saying that if it was more like the Cassie J mentality, if it was more like the, you know, Honey Badgers, Karen Strawn mentality, and less like the put forward fucking H. Pearl Davis fucking intellectual dark web jack off bullshit mentality um, that hates, you know, a whole lot of shit and blames a whole lot of externalities and a whole lot of shit like that. If they actually wanted to have rational conversations again, it would be a whole lot more interesting. But um, the fact is 
that these people have this split. And we are talking about how the Manosphere has warped into something worse. Because, here's the thing, uh, equality is impossible. And the, the, the existence of an equilibrium, the existence of an equality between now and what was is physically not even possible. We are talking about what has changed. It has not stayed the same. And for you to claim that it's some static thing that we're being unfair to, rather than acknowledging the fact that these things exist as problems in the modern manifestation, means that your brain is fixed in place and that you need to stop being so fixed in place. Because we are being completely rational and reasonable about the subject at hand. We're being rational about where it be like what it became and where it's going rather than just talking about where it was good at one point in time and treating that as an isolated vacuum it's not things got worse and they got worse in most circles including the feminist ones um it's gotten a lot worse in all places and it's like widening this gap between people who should be uniting against the systems that actually fuck us over that's the thing like so we're not against the good people here. We're against the bad ones and talking about that. And the fact that you want to try to stymie that fucking discussion because you came in partway through and want to make a bunch of assumptions about what we believe and who we are means you can go fuck yourself. <laughs> like, so where was this stream shared to where these people are finding it? No idea, and I don't care. <laughs> Probably because certain... I'm guessing because it has certain keywords in it. I yeah. have no idea. I mean, pop culture, you can say it's just pop culture, but politics is downstream from culture, right? A toxic culture creates toxic politics. So it goes from something that doesn't matter, your grandpa being racist at Thanksgiving and everybody ignored him, to all of a sudden, your grandpa's in the Senate. You know, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, yeah. you can't afford to ignore your grandpa anymore, right? So, like, I understand why this sometimes seems like just a, oh, if I take issue with this little cultural problem and that little cultural problem, it'll, it'll never end. Sure, the battle with Satan is eternal. It is not, like, something we just do for a couple minutes right now. You know, it's something that you, you wrestle with every day. And, yeah, that means holding the people. Now, what can you do on your part? Obviously, I'm not holding Andrew Tate accounts, accountable. But I can hold my my racist grandpa accountable, or I can hold my son or daughter accountable if they say something. You know, I think we we can't dismiss. Everybody thinks, oh, this uh, for two hundred years or or more, everybody has had this mentality that oh, when this generation grows up, the right wing's going to be gone or the right wing's going to be gone, and it never is because the youth do latch on to some of these things, and right now, especially the men. They're latching on to this hyper conservative movement that is treating them, that is training them to be victims. And once you start with that victim mentality, I mean, just ask the left wing 30 years ago about this. How hard is that to let go of? How hard is that when that's part of your identity to say I'm oppressed, I'm I'm put off against, I'm I, I don't know how to get better, you know, and, and it's not my fault that I can't get better and there's nothing I can do that that becomes part of your identity. And then all of a sudden you have the right wing who loves to pretend to not play identity politics, <laughs> literally playing identity politics uh -huh. by creating an identity and then politicizing it. So it may seem just like a cultural issue for you right now. And it may just seem like, oh, these little harassment things here and there. But listen, while Andrew Tate and Jordan Peterson might talk a little smack, I mean, what, last week they did like a podcast together and we're plenty friendly like this mm -hmm. is the you know much like the republicans and democrats that'll smack each other in the chops and you know in the middle of the parliament building but as soon as they're behind closed doors you know they're swimming together they're playing softball they're they're smoking cigars you know they don't care and they're like <laughs> hell yeah more money for the more right. right. machine to bring up that, that all that shit is not exclusive to the right mm -hmm. like the left wing absolutely it oh, it's yeah. just behavior like that's why i call it status <laughs> it's just status shit. There's really no left or right about it. It's just branded differently yeah. so that it can capture and, the crowd. And then right. imagine... It's pandering because, it, yeah, it, uh, <laughs> it's pandering by people who, you know, need support so that they can, yeah, continue to leech off of everyone else. Yeah. And then imagine, and it almost seems like it would be like the perfect, wouldn't, like, this is where I might get bored on conspiratorial, <clears throat> but it's not really conspiracy. It's like, <laughs> Wouldn't it just be 
perfect way to make people turn against things like civil rights and women's rights and things is by having people who make the concept sound yes. toxic in the way they present it. Oh, I've said this before, like, um, <laughs> like on the subject of trans issues, which we had talked about previously. I mean, it's not really an accident that like when, you know, the establishment wants to generate controversy, they pick people like Dylan Mulvaney to represent mm -hmm. trans people. Mm -hmm. That's all I'll say about that. Yeah, or they'll start rain, rainbow washing the military industrial complex. Like, yeah, look, we're we're LGBTQIA. Never mind that we blow up shit for no reason. No, 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 no. We're 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 we're, we're accepting of all, all color, all imperialists. Hashtag. Right. I mean, that's just blatant. That's just blatant pandering. But I'm talking about like you know, certain. Yeah, I'm talking about the establishment deliberately choosing things that they know are going to be controversial. Like, remember the whole thing with, like, family-friendly drag shows? Like, yeah. That, drag. I mean, I said at the time, I'm like, this is such obvious rage bait. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there are a bunch of, you know, I, I'm sure there are out there somewhere some, you know, stupid, you know, progressive Democrat suburban parents who decided to bring their kids to drag shows because they thought it was supporting the LGBT community. But you know, by and large, this was, you know, a couple isolated insulin in isolated incidents. And then, you know, this was being heavily reported on by the media to make it seem like it was some big thing. Also, you know, because, you know, it would it would it was like baiting. It was deliberate conservative baiting. So then the conservatives would freak out about it. And then, you know, the progressives would be like, you know, they would take this as, you know, evidence of, you know, the right being, you know, reactionary and hateful towards the LGBT community. And and also I've like cherry it. picking, like, you know, like they, they're just like, you know, oh, these it's it's so evil. But then like it's like hashtag not a drag queen exists on Twitter. Go go look at that. Anybody who wants to see something awesome, look at that. And also horrifying and disgusting and horrible. Look at hashtag not a drag queen on Twitter, and you will see an absolute cavalcade of just cishet people being like this. Like the actual groomers. Right. So, I think maybe a lizard might have been trying to say something, and... He's... Hopefully he'll come back. Uh, looks like he's gotten disconnected a Hello. few times. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. So, like... Were you trying to say something? I don't know if my mic is working half the time or not. So, like, um, I got. Can y'all hear me yes. now? Uh -huh. Right now, yeah. Okay, so like, I got a question about all this. What's the difference in y'all's mind between a child-friendly drag show and child pageantry? Oh, nothing. There is no. <laughs> like, in fact, is... in fact, let me oh, just be God, specific. That's so cringe. Child pageantry is worse because that's where a bunch of conservatives can like pretend that like th it's so much different when they're dolling up a child and then like get that child basically groomed into being a sex object for people when she's missed something or other later on down in her life like e emphasizing like beauty as the aesthetic ideal rather than like anything that actually means anything training these people that actually being shallow vapid consumers who look a certain way is the way to be i would argue the child beauty pageants um, are worse culturally than drag shows involving kids. Oh boy! Yeah, I, was I, just, can... I was just wondering because, like, a lot of these quote-unquote child drag shows are just like people letting their kids get together and like walk out on stage dressed up in like costumes and shit, like, and being supportive of that. And uh, I, I feel like with pageantry, it's a little bit more, uh, a little bit more actively grooming. Because you're like trying to doll up your fucking kid to look the best for a bunch of creepy adults and shit. Ooh, and like now I'm getting flashbacks of Miss Teen USA. Let me rate your child. I'm not a creep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like what exactly. if I was in eighth grade like, and I saw Miss Teen USA? None of that going on in child drag shows. Like they're literally just running around on stage and the, the parents are just like, yeah. Like that's that's really it. I think so, there were, like, maybe, like, one or two instances of, you know, like, kids at a show that, okay, probably, probably not child-friendly at the same time, though, like, I mean, okay, I've seen worse. I mean, I, I would liken it to, I mean, I mean, I've, I've been to drag shows once or twice. They, they're entertaining. I generally would consider it, you know, 
adult entertainment. Like I would I would liken it to bringing your kid to see like a comedian that told lots of sex jokes. Like it, okay, yeah, it's you're probably There's okay. Sex- uh, yeah, direct, like it, yeah. it's uncomfortable for the people involved. Like you, it doesn't need to be a thing, but yeah, There's it's also not some. It's like, not as big of a deal as being made out to be either. There's a spectrum to drag shows though, where it's like um, some of them are very sexual and definitely not yeah. kid friendly, and then there there are those that definitely are, and like to think that they are sexual probably means that you need therapy. So like I mean, I, every drag queen no. I've ever seen has dressed up as a hypersexualized caricature of a woman, but and made dick jokes. But okay, maybe well, am I being again, uh, ignorant here? Well, yeah, again, I would go to them. I mean, most related. major cities have them. Again, that's a single isolated incident, but um, yeah, I mean that person is definitely in the wrong if they're making like dick jokes in front of kids. You shouldn't be right. doing that. I'm, I'm just talking about no, like uh, in general, like my own experiences with drag queens. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't actually know a ton about all these so-called family-friendly drag shows, aside from the shit that was heavily publicized. Which you know, at the time, I'm like, that's probably you know, one or two incidents, and then this is being heavily promoted by the media to make it to make it you know seem like some you know major thing meant to drive controversy. Well, I mean, you know, there are there are definitely like small, like isolated instances, like you were talking about earlier, yeah. where, you know, it's a bunch of fucking predators hosting a drag show. That does still happen. Right. I would not consider that the rule. Of course. Right. Well, no, I mean, and I figured as much at the time. Yeah. I and, still assume that's correct. And that's the same thing that like that I was saying earlier, because if you look at and what. what We'll have, like, episodes specifically on queer liberation as well, because I think it's important. Um, but, like, like that the specific issue, you will see vastly more actual, confirmed, authenticated cases of grooming uh, from the pageantry scene. Um, and, uh-huh. you know, you'll see a lot... It's, it's like when they say, you know, oh, these, these drag queens, but then they're, they're church or they're Boy Scout troop or their right-wing, like, Catholic school, or their, you know, PTA, or their, uh, 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 and all these, like, primarily cishet people, um, mostly white dudes, uh, are actually the ones, like, overwhelmingly predate these targets that they can just point people at. And that's, like, part of the thing with the, the, the Manosphere bullshit, is to pretend that there's a war on masculinity and we need to do something about it. Um, you know... And so, like, it, it all connects. It all ties. That's the, the divide is comprised of these people, all of them. Like, creating a negative environment, justifying that negative environment by the consequences it reaps, and not being willing to actually be genuine about the, like, and have an adult conversation about the situations at hand. Like, there are, and just to be clear, if you're still watching Inland Empire, um, there are reasonable people in the manosphere not all of them are equally unreasonable and i've had more reasonable conversations um with these people than you would probably like to admit um but the fact is that they're not all reasonable and the people who get the most clicks right now are the ones playing victim mentality bullshit so that's the thing or like you know creating more scenarios creating more toxicity and being like that kind of person so the point of this stream, which we will be wrapping soon because we're, we're reaching two hours on the stream, mm-hmm. but like the, the, the point that, that we're trying to make, all of us here, including the one who had to leave, is that basically uh, this problem exists and the Manosphere, uh, not as a whole, not like 100% of them and 100% of their audience, but like enough of them to move the needle is creating a problem and that's the thing we need to solve these problems if we actually want these issues solved if you want men helped you're gonna have to pick up the work and it's gonna be a lot more difficult than just saying women lgbt immigrants bad culture high time preference hoes bitches it's they they label and decentralize and you fall into the trap 
you've become a lot like them, that's why you got defensive, and then you labeled and decentralized us so that you could dismiss people who agreed with you earlier in the stream. <laughs> Please do better. Well, okay, if you're not being called, you know, both a feminist and a pick me who has internalized misogyny, you're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's like if you're not being called, you know, a Democrat, a Republican, a liberal, conservative, progressive, reactionary, fascist, anarchist, and communist all in the same day, you're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, very much. Yeah. <laughs> so, I guess we'll, we'll call it soon. Closing statements from folks. <laughs> I mean... I wish I was sooner. Yeah, well, well, we'll we'll talk about this issue and more, and I'll make sure to like. So, uh, the the stream was basically scheduled for um, seven p Eastern, so like uh, that's. But we'll schedule another one, and like, uh, be very specific about that. Um, and we'll also talk about like so the queer liberation stuff. I think is very important. And we can, like, not only have you on, but some uh, some other folks broaden the perspective and get the conversation going in a lot of interesting directions. And we can also talk about this issue a little bit more because I think this ties directly into that for a lot of reasons that I said. I think that the same people who want us fighting, the, uh, fighting women want us fighting LGBT people as well. Um, and I think that all of this ties in together. So we could have a recap of this episode, tie up some loose ends, and then go on to talk about the issues of LGBT um, and how those things can like be better impacted by a better culture and social strata. So I think that that one will be very interesting and I definitely want your input for that. So we'll, we'll make sure to schedule that. I did schedule this one in advance though. Like I, I was very specific on the time. No, I know you did. It was on your part. It was on your part as well. I, I honestly like just passed out. Ah, makes sense. So <laughs> we all agreed on seven, and then you know it got pushed back anyway. Yeah. Usually does. <laughs> well, and I'll be on time next time too, because like my audience was expecting seven as well. So uh, I'll be. Oh, that wasn't your fault, because I, I was running behind too. Yeah, but like I could have done more with the the beginning of the day, and we could have gotten started. I, either way, it kind of it works out better this way. Because, like, the cohesion is important and getting as many different consistent perspectives that are actually listening to each other is important. Because without that, we might as well just be that guy in chat coming in halfway through and not knowing what the fuck we're talking about. So, like, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna, t I'm gonna stop now. He might be a subscriber, I don't know. He probably hit unsubscribe, I don't know. But, like, the point is that, yeah, we, we, we definitely need to be all on the same page. Uh, and lizards, we will be sure to get you on um, when we do that. Uh, so, with all that being said, so closing statements. Let I guess I'll be organized about this. Closing statements from Dead Boy. One of the things that this conflicts like this, or any of these current cultural conflicts, make me think of is when Frederick Bosque made his anal analysis in the law about how basically statist or people with cynical views of humanity try to seek to find antagonisms everywhere of course in this case it's man versus woman hetero versus homo whatever dynamic there is rich versus poor whatever and how the fact that when they when the law is used in a malicious way it gives other people or like when these antagonisms are created it makes everybody have a vested interest in state power and we're seeing that both with the manosphere and the authoritarian side of the feminist movement is that they both have a stake in state power mm -hmm. and the more that they keep doing this and not actually trying to have a constructive conversation or even be self-critical about you know the role that their rhetoric is playing in the situation it's just going to keep going further and further it's just adding more tentacles to the same beast if you will and they need to see through that because the sooner they do, the much better. Yeah. All right. You, Rose? Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, I pretty much said everything I wanted to. I will say, though, like, me, 
all I can't stand any of this culture war bullshit because you know it keeps us divided. It keeps us fighting over fake issues rather than you know focusing on who the actual enemy is. But I mean, I've said this already several times. Like I find the gender wars shit to be you know by far some of the most disheartening. You know, men and women are yin and yang. They're not you know they're not the same, but one is not better than the other. They're both equally necessary in order for society to function. So mm-hmm. seeing you know like. 50% of the population approximately pitted against the other 50% is just, it's like, this is so stupid. Like, why? Why are we doing this? Mm-hmm. It's really stupid. And I guess, I don't know, it's sad seeing people fall for it. Yeah. 100%. About you, Odie? Like go- yeah, um, having been trapped in the in the manosphere myself and if somebody is lucky enough to get out if you do know know somebody who is there um we've given you a lot of recommendations on what to read already and so i'm sorry to do this again but i would look into like cult deprogramming now that may sound like oh they're in a cult like what we're in robes and we're sacrificing people to you know ripping out hearts or whatever there's a good chance like if you look at like steven Hassan's like cult like what makes a cult that your job is pretty cult like i mean how many jobs will tell you you're our family you're part of the <laughs> family and and no you're you're fired as soon as anything inconvenient comes up right you are absolutely not a family you know mm-hmm. to- I mean, this is that's a that's a tactic of a cult, mm-hmm. you know. And so this is something that happens when you fall into the manosphere is you get te- part you get into part of a cult. However, when you are going to address somebody who is part of this community that they love, somebody that has meant a lot to them, just saying you're in a cult is one of the strongest ways to drive somebody further into it. It's, uh, again, if you watch, like, Daryl Davis videos, this is another thing where it's just, like, I don't immediately go, like, oh, you're in the KKK, you're a piece of crap, you know, and then they they don't start there. Now, you may argue correctly that you have the right to say this, that, or the other. Mm-hmm. I'm not arguing against your right. You obviously have the right to say this is right and this is wrong, and I should argue to do what's right as opposed to what's wrong. But if you want to win, that oftentimes means forfeiting your right. You know, your right to free speech includes cursing people out on the streets if you feel like it. However, if you want to be regarded as an influential person who can change minds, that's probably not the best way to go about it. Mm-hmm. Um, Dave Smith, when he was uh, talking to the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire, was like, hey, you guys are doing a great job getting clicks. You know what the best way to get clicks is? deny the holocaust you will immediately get a ton of people who will follow you however you need to reflect on what you're doing to the movement if you actually want the movement to win then you will simply not because it generates clicks generate whatever you sometimes need to have a lot of temperance so when you deal with somebody who is in the manosphere show them a lot of patience i would say spend at least two hours agreeing with them if you know them personally agree with them when they say that something's wrong and it is um we just kind of ended on this drag show conversation if you see an adult being pervy at a drag show call it out now here's the thing you may in your heart of hearts get a little defensive because our children much more likely to be molested in well let's take the top two schools and church right and then Boy Scouts, organization, whatever. The way these places got so bad is because a bunch of adults shut up and decided not, eh, that looks wrong, but I'm not going to say anything, Mm -hmm. right? So when you see this kind of behavior go on, you don't have to address it violently. You don't have to address it angrily, but you do need to be like, oh, that? No, heck with that. So when somebody who is stuck in the manosphere says, what about this person who wants to raise men in tanks? Now, like, and harvest their sperm, and that's their view. Now, your your immediate reaction, which may not be wrong, is to minimize that person by being like, they're not really a voice for us, or not many people actually think that. It's, why not instead just go, you are right. Screw that opinion. Forget that person. Wash my hands of them. I don't want to have anything to do with them. Because mm-hmm. 
if you do that quickly, then all of a sudden you don't get the Christian nationalists who for the longest time didn't strongly denounce nationalism. They denounced it a little bit if you would ask them directly. We're not nationalists, but we understand. <laughs> Instead, just give a firm answer. The Bible says the Lord hates the lukewarm answer, right? He wants your yes to be yes, your no to be no. He wants you to be strong on this. So when you see something bad, instead of justifying or excusing, say, you're right, that's bad. I really, I really agree with you. That's bad. Oh, you went on a date and she did what? Oh, that's terrible. That's awful. However, as soon as they, you see them start to flip over to, all right, well, thank you for listening to me for two hours about this terrible date I have. Women, huh? Be like, well, hold on. My mom is a really good person. She raised me to be a strong man. She taught me real strong values. Yeah, but generally women today, well, Actually, maybe you're just dating at the wrong place. Hey, maybe you're on a college campus. A lot of people are trying to have new experiences on a college campus. Maybe try, maybe try dating over here. Oh, hey, maybe you're finding that there's a lot of negative experiences when you attempt to present yourself this way. Maybe try presenting yourself a different way instead. Not being an inauthentic you, but let's present you in a way that's actually more successful, in a way that actually gets the, the most you out of you. You know, and so I think that what I want to stress is when you see somebody stuck in the manosphere, see somebody who's defensive, first find ways that you agree with them. Establish that trust, gain that friendship. And then when you have that, go ahead and then hit them with the, hey, you've said some things about women recently, and I just got to say, I believe that they've happened to you. I believe in your personal experiences. I believe in the experiences of the community that you're with. However, that's not everybody. So please understand that you need to go, you know, that you need to change, that there's some, there's, there's a better way to do things. Because when you collectivize people, you will become collectivized. Mm -hmm. We have seen this historically over and over and over. As soon as you collectivize your enemy, you become collectivists, right? And you become collectivized. So as soon as you join in on that, and you make people lose their individualism, in this case, women, and just say like, well, generally they tend to be slaves towards this, that, and the other. Okay, well then you generally tend to be a piece of garbage and you generally tend to defend people like Andrew Tate and defend people like Matt Walsh and generally tend to defend people like sure. Oh, I don't agree with them 100%. Again, no lukewarm. When they say something wrong, speak up. So I just think establish that personal connection. This is the best way to reach out to somebody that is cult programmed, whether it's the whether it's your job or manosphere, whatever it may be. Establish that personal connection. Be ready to give them a new community. Um, I'm part of the Love First Christians. If you have somebody who's a person of faith that's looking for really positive stuff, as well as a bunch of imperfect people that are willing to have conversations, please let me know. The Love First Christians, we love to talk with people. If you're not a Christian, we have a general chat for people that'll that'll chat with you as well. Um, and we take it really well. Um, it is not a hostile place. Uh, we welcome criticism. Um, even if you just want to vent about terrible Christianity for a hot minute, believe me, there are plenty of Christians in our chat <laughs> that vent about how terrible Christianity or Christians who practice the faith a certain way. So that's one of the reasons I founded it was to have this community be a part of it so that instead of just saying, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad, it's so easy to, to point out things that are bad, to be like, come on over here and talk about it and then get used to this better community. Um, I think I said this last time. And this is my finishing conversation. I'm sorry, I know I've gone a while. Hey, yeah. I finished the thought here. Uh, Caesar Milan, when he has a really, really, really bad dog, <laughs> and the rehabilitation does not work, and he's tried to train the people, and that doesn't work. What does he do? He takes the dog out and he puts it with his his dogs. Nothing is stronger than community. You may think you have all the logical and arguments. You may have the right book, the right video. You may have the best, smartest, most empathetic way to communicate something. Nothing beats community, nothing. It is the strongest thing we have. When they looked at Portugal and why people were kicking drugs, community. They were no longer being shamed and imprisoned. They suddenly gained a community of people who were helping, who, who were helping them recover, right? So with Caesar Milan's dog, when there's somebody who's really problematic, put them in with the good dogs and watch them transform. Um, if you are yourself part of a good, positive community, I don't care if it's barbecue or video gaming or uh, philosophy or politics or whatever it may be, 
Invite people into that community. Focus less on the people you exclude and know that if you have a good community, that if you include somebody who is imperfect, if your culture is right, it will perfect that person. It's a huge part of Christianity, and I want it to be a huge part of politics as well. And Lizard, because you've, you've had your hand up, and also you will be the final closing statement, basically, before I say some words. Go for it, as long as you need to. Okay. I, I just want to say that, like, it's important to um, understand and realize that, like, when you're a part of a cult, it's pretty often the, the – it's very often the case that you don't actually know it. And, like, you've you've been fooled by the people around you to be a part of that that group. Um, and it's, like, it, it's definitely no, um, no attack on the individual when somebody else is telling you that you might be a part of a cult. It's a it's a more of a call for you as an individual to look at the people around and and make sure that you're not being taken advantage of by the people that you consider your community. Um, also, I I also uh, would like to go on a little uh, freedom of speech rant here. You have the right to say anything you want. But that doesn't save you from uh, social repercussions. And that's kind of the the unsaid part or the unwritten part about freedom of speech. So, like, if you want to fucking go out and, like, ramble on about white supremacy and shit, it doesn't fucking... Don't expect people to, like, fucking, like, not hate you for it. Like, people aren't going to fucking embrace that, you know? So, like... I don't know. That's just my take on freedom of speech. I don't think that you ever have to actually sacrifice your freedom of speech if you want to be influential. You just have to like not be a piece of shit and like make sure that your message is being received okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um. Uh, other than that, though, like I I'm pretty much done. So. And I'll just say, everybody. You can never improve yourself enough. If anybody says that you are your ultimate self or that you can become your ultimate self by following their routine, piss on them. Fuck those people. Those people are trying to trap you. Those people are trying to get you trapped by your own ego, by theirs, by their destructive mentalities that want to halt you before you reach anything even remotely approaching perfection because you will never get close to perfect so if anybody tries to stop you on your journey and say here's where it is know that it's way higher than that you'll never get there so anybody trying to stop you from climbing is holding you back kick them off the ladder before they drag you down to their level so with that being said i would like to invite all of our viewers to sign up for my course on how you can become your best self for the little, little <laughs> price of forty nine ninety nine a month. Yeah, right. We have an exclusive Discord server with perks to see my tits, my tits. <laughs> you want to see my tits? Fucking all right. So, anyway, with all that being said, um, yeah, I think that, uh, and we we should have the conversation relatively soon about. Uh, LGBT issues and how best to address those and how uh, to sort of repair the cultural uh, divide that has caused a lot of fuck shit in this regard. So, um, with that being said, uh, this has been the latest installment of Real Libertarians. Like, share, and subscribe if you thought this was valuable. Comment if you thought we missed something. Uh, if you think I'm a massive piece of shit, comment that on a platform that isn't YouTube because they'll censor your comment if it's too, like, angry. But definitely do that in the comments of some other thing because the algorithm will boost it and I feed off your hatred. Um, so, with all that being said, um, smash the fucking state, not the people around you who are just trying to maintain on a similar level to you. Because we need all hands on fucking deck and we do not have time for this divide. One moment. <laughs>